Oh, okay, okay. Go live. Let's hit that. It should it should do it now. All right. I guess we are live. I guess we are live. One, two, three. That's yeah, we are live. Do you see it now? Okay, perfect. What's going on, Paul? It's been a while, man. Yeah, <laughs> how's it going? Thanks for doing this. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Everybody knows Paul. I got to talk to you once, right? We did it only once, I guess, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Now we get to brain, like pick your brain on some ZBrush stuff, modeling, Z modeler, and uh, do some fun stuff together. I love Z modeler, by the way. I'm just using Z modeler for everything these days, like high res, low res, UVs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I make everything in ZBrush. I don't use Maya for low res. Yeah, <laughs> it's best. All right, cool. So let's do it. Oh, they should be able to. Oh, uh, okay. I see why. I see why. Let me fix it. Hold on a second. Can you say something? Sure. Can you hear they me? should, yeah, they should be able to hear you now because it was on a different very channel. Low. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear it? Uh, it says the sound is messed up. Wild Hogger says the sound is messed up. Let me check. Let me check it. Hold on a second. Okay. Can you say something? Sure. Can you hear they me? should, yeah, they should. Okay, wait, no, no, the, I hear the, you. It's good. Oh. It's it's a bit low. I mean. Because you're not using a microphone, it's I guess it's is it your camera microphone? No, no, I'm using a, a Yeti. I'm oh, so you got you got to bring it closer to you if you can. I'm using a high end microphone that I always use for all my. Oh meetings. yeah, bring it forward, closer, it's like me. No problems I've ever had before. That way you can you can get the best. Um, is it should better? Should be able to hear me fine. Huh? Should be able to hear me fine. I use this all the time. Yeah, it's not. I don't think it's using. Uh, like your audio is not super clear. Maybe your settings are not using the same. Do you want to check your no, settings? No, nothing has changed. I use this every day. On Zoom as well? Yep. Well, yep, I've used it on Zoom, no problem. Yeah, it's not super clear. I use Zoom uh, all the time. So here, let's... I mean, I, keep, I hear you, but it's not like... It doesn't sound like Yeti, if that makes sense. Yeti should be super clear. Let me just check the feedback. Let's do this. Hold yeah. on. We'll double check stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Hold on a second, guys. First live after a while, so this should be fixed in a bit. Uh, how is my sound now, guys? Is it better? One, two, three. One, two, three. If it's better, let me know in the in the comments. It should be louder now. Okay. Now you're streaming. Fine. Yes. Now per it's perfect. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Let me just increase. Can you say something? Yep. Here yeah, we go. That's, that's perfect. That is perfect. All right. Is it better guys? One, two, three. Test, Paul, can you say something? Okay, yeah. Wild Hog says he still doesn't hear me. No, they should be able to hear you because I, I checked YouTube. It's clear. Okay. Yeah, it is clear. Let me double check one more time. Perfect. All right. Okay. Is it better, we're guys? Good. We're getting mostly. It might be some of the Wild Hog then. Yeah, it could be. It has to check. Can you say something? Okay, yeah. Sounds like everyone else is good to go. Yeah, yeah, we are good to go. I hear you perfectly well. Thanks okay. for doing this, Paul. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So Paul is going to show us some tricks. We're going to pick his brain on ZBrush, ZModeler, have some fun together. He gave me this time after so long. I appreciate it, man. Let's go. Okay. 
let's rock and roll what do we do well let's start with questions whatever questions are already out there in the world if you guys have questions go with questions if you don't have questions maybe we can you can just showcase some i don't know like anything you feel like doing with z modeler yeah well yeah i'm i'm working on i'm working on this obviously the x-wing so um i i tend to myself personally get an actual model to look at physically besides mm. just images so i got a little x-wing here That's and cool. doing the um x-wing of luke skywalker because i've done a tie fighter already and i've been 3d printing that out so you can see oh that's my... awesome man all zbrush yeah 100 percent zbrush and then here is the cockpit oh that's pretty camera. cool that's awesome this is off an elegoo printer that i have over here next to me so um this is all set and then it's it's just gonna pop it and glue together like so oh that's cool then you got to paint it? Yeah, I'm going to paint it. Uh, I painted a couple. Here, I've got a couple painted already. Let's see if I can find them. So I was going to make a little scene above my head in my office. So I was just going to do like, here, here's silver. Oh, interesting. That's pretty just cool. just paint it black in there. Hmm. Obviously, because that's black. Um, and then so I have different sizes. So here's off of, this is off of form two. Oh, form two. That's cool. Is well. it is it worth the price? And then oh, at a form too? Yeah. Um, at this point, like if you're trying to get into it, I would not probably. I would probably look at you know the costs. Uh, the form the form two. Well, form twos are gone, so it's form threes now. Yeah, it's form three now, which are amazing. So yeah, they 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 have a fantastic printer. They have an amazing printer. Um, but I also bought the Elegoo because it is a cheaper printer mm. and the material is a lot cheaper. It's, um, 35 bucks a liter. Mm. So I've been using both. That's cool. There you go. Uh, so, so wait, there's a question. I have a question. Why not ZBrush fix the dynamic symmetry clipping tools? Uh, what are you referring to? Then what Can dynamic you... clipping tool are you referring to? Are you referring to the knife brush? Are you referring to the trim brush? Are you referring to the slice brush? The knife brush does work symmetrically. The clip brushes do work symmetrically. They can't work dynamically. It's not a it's not a bug. They just can't work dyna dynamically right now. And the the dynamic or local symmetry is a global setting. It's not per subtool setting. A dynamic symmetry is a, a global a global setting. So when you're having this on, it's going to as you cycle through the subtools. What what is he talking about? I'm not sure. He's talking about the new symmetry. So in ZBrush oh. now, the new version. So if you have the newest version, oh, I don't have that now. Newest. And so when you have symmetry on, so if I here do a play build up. So obviously you're working symmetrically like this. Yeah. And now if you rotate your model, you now maintain symmetry. Oh wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, but that's a new mode, which is oh. dynamic, which you can only get in ZBrush 2023. Interesting. Um, when you talk talking about dynamic, you know ZBrush, um, the dynamic brush is always on. Are you guys planning to keep that? Because I'm used to like um not using dynamic brush and then every time i have to turn it off um one thing i wanted to ask you is is there a way that there could be a better button to turn off the dynamic it's very hard to click on it when you change the brush you know from dynamic to regular brush are you I talking dynamic in the symmetry or dynamic in the not draw? just the brush itself like when you press space you're talking about this right yeah here? you see it's so hard to click on that it's a it's a double click in the corner yeah so I don't know if you guys just... are planning to maybe make it bigger or make it like a button similar to the Z ad or something like that. That would be more efficient. Yeah, um, maybe possible. The thing you also you'd have to think about if you make it a button, that's now I can't do this and have both things at my disposal. Oh, I see what you mean. So now you got to think about things like that or same thing with the space bar. You got to 
Now, if you want to use this menu, you got to have put that button somewhere in here. Yeah, I always use the space bar, always, because I'm the right. oldest school, like since ZBrush 2. <laughs> right. I don't like this space bar personally because I don't like having UI in, on top of me oh, on top I see of what I'm mean. working on. That's just, but there's a personal preference. There's yeah, a lot of yeah. people use this. I prefer using this for my draw size because then it's just right there. Wherever my cursor is, I get my draw size. Mm. And I know that's what I'm getting. I just prefer that. I'm so, so used to like, the space bar that it's like, it just happens. Like I don't even look at it. I quickly change it like that. Yeah. Yeah. We, the space bar also, it stays at the top. So you're getting the same thing. You're right on the draw size. Mm. Yeah. So it's nice having that. Uh, but to answer your question, I don't know. I mean, it, it, that's the things you got to think about. If you did change it to a button, it's now you got to put it in here. I don't have access to when I'm doing this. Mm. And then any of you that are doing custom UIs, you got to think of all that stuff now too. Because yeah. now it's another button you got to drag out for your custom UI to turn off. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a pop, but you know, things always uh, keep evolving. Yeah, getting better all the time. So let's do some magic, man. I don't know, like I, I use ZModeler a lot. When I teach in my classes, people are surprised how much you can do with polygroups, ZModeler, you know, or Iman brushes. I don't know if you saw, I made a summary a year ago in my classes and I made the summary with Iman brushes and ZModeler. Or when I make armors, I just mm -hmm. use ZModeler. Like I built everything in ZBrush directly, high res, low res. Yeah, and people don't know like everybody. I have I have to convince my students. Hey, use this. It's better than modeling in Maya. It's much faster, especially when you have polygroups. Like yep. there's so much you can do in ZBrush. There is, especially if you're you're taking advantage of poly. Like here, for example, let's let's just say something. Let's say uh, I want to make some kind of new like Mac head or something like that, right? Yeah. So this like this is the beauty of us being digital. I've already got a head that I can pull up. Um. And then I want to now start designing with this. Yeah. So I want to move very fast and thinking about this of where I maybe want to start going with this character, right? So me personally now, I tend to turn on Sculptures Pro now uh, because then I can also just get rid of things real fast. Like, see, I can get rid of the ears. Yeah. And then just start building up on this surface and start looking at shape, silhouette more. Mm -hmm. Then I can start building this up. And then you can do a combination here of uh, having obviously dynamesh with this yeah but, so that's kind of what i have right now because it's in dynamesh mode oh but interesting. I found, so you use been, dynamesh and the other one yeah but i've also talked to a lot of artists that they've stopped using dynamesh as much because of sculptures pro interesting because you're not you're not limited now at all you don't have to have a guess your resolution you don't mm. do anything like that but i like to do a little bit of a combination mm. of it see because then i can just really change things and then boom so when you go to a really br big brush size, right, you're making really big triangles, which means very, see, you're going to destroy real fast. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I can get it back and then come back, but like, especially hard surface wise and thinking about things, uh, especially let's say something like using Z modeler. Okay. The other thing that I like to do with Sculptures Pro personally, obviously one of the best brushes is H polish. Um, where you can just kind of flat start flattening things like this. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of start, you know, finding maybe I'll use a little bit of a Damien standard as an example yeah. to just start finding planes. And I love that addition that we made too, which is the being able to just create lines mm. like perfectly Straight to where lines. you want them to go. So this is using lazy mouse. So you click on the surface, hold the shift key, and then my pen's not coming off my Cintiq at all. And right, how, so I can, do you click or you just hold yeah, shift so, and move? So you just click on the surface, right? So if you were drawing, mm -hmm. we draw like normal. Yes. But if you click and then hold the shift key, it's going to make a big long line. Yeah. So now if you let go of the shift key, your curve oh, it's going to create end, that. Interesting. And then click shift key again. So in essence, I'm not taking my pen off my Cintiq, yeah. staying on it the whole time. So as a hard surface quick way of working i like to do this yeah that's so perfect. um what i like to do though is when i switch to something like h polish i actually don't like sculptures pro personally on h polish i kind of want it to not add the triangles i just kind of want it to start getting my shapes so excuse me something about obviously sculptures pro that some people might not might not be aware of mm -hmm. is coming into the brush palette you actually can have global settings or local to brush. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, hold on, I'm just reading a question from Kenyon. That's fine. Uh, I can feed up the your uh, suggestion having dynamic symmetry not being global. I that's already, I think, in our my list of things to look at and see if it's a possibility. So I'm assuming you want it per subtool, like you want to control dynamic symmetry per subtool is what you want. There's a delay, so it will yep. probably respond in a bit. So there is your global settings here which we've made changes to this as well you have now the picker and your adaptive size now you can click and drag and it'll find the triangle size of what you're actually hovering over so you can see my slider of the subdiv is is changing so if i like this triangle size then that's what i'm going to get when i start to skull and mm -hmm. so it's looking at those triangles underneath but it's also looking at right now, my brush size as a comparison. And the reason why it's doing that is because this adaptive size is on. If you turn this off, your brush size is no longer controlling the polygon size. So now when I go to sculpt, you can see the triangles are a lot bigger. So now this is even more important because if I want smaller triangles, mm. I make the slider go lower. Instead of so, dyno mesh, that would actually control the density of the mesh. Yeah, it's controlling your density, right? So this is all global. This means when you are in Sculptures Pro mode, any brush that can use Sculptures Pro is looking at these settings. So going back to H Polish, I don't like this. So in the brush palette, we also have Sculptures Pro here. So you kind of have, see where it says use global means, hey, use the settings in that stroke. If you turn this off, now you can set just this brush to have different settings. So IE, I can say, I don't want it to use the brush size and I want a certain polygon count. So when you're doing this, you see you get a really different size triangles. So you have this ability, but for me, I like to just also turn it off. Mm. So you can either turn it on and off individually per brush, or you can even then say certain brushes have their own certain settings when mm -hmm. you're in Sculptures Pro mode. And I think this is why some people have really gravitated towards um, this. Mm -hmm. it's because it's just there's a lot of control and it's all locally by the brush yeah i gotta try this i never tried using the i mean i always use dynamish instead and then yeah. obviously yeah. it depends on this scenario right yeah like like me this i want to start working real fast and just i want to start finding like especially hard surface yeah some shape right and just start and then I want to, so I, I, I don't want that. Like, I don't want to work really fast, right? Like this. So same thing with the smooth brush. Now I can turn it off. So now it's just smoothing. There's no mm. sculptures pro. So I want to just start finding something here and start looking for some element here that I want to have on him and then start, okay, I want a flat face in there. Then I tend to use some like of uh, the Damien standard brush and then just start finding maybe a plane shifts that I want. And again, using that shift key to find something in here um and then just start looking at different surface of what i might be able to do here give me things like this and then yeah i want to come across like that so i'll use this kind of as a quick technique to start looking at my model and just starting to figure out a design that mm. maybe where i want to go and it's very rough it doesn't very matter very rough yeah, that, that is key. I think you got to be really rough. And I think this is the difference when you're hard surface modeling inside of ZBrush. Um, you know, when I talk about hard surface model, you know, in the old way of box modeling, you're restricted to the actual polygons. Yeah. So you're you're driving everything by the polygons. So I got to slice it. I got to split it. I got to play with edges. You're not doing that in the world of ZBrush. You're just just playing with a ball of clay. And then you're I mean, trying to figure out what is it you want this to start looking like, right? Yeah. For me, if I'm using a concept and I'm following the concept 100%, I would just go with Z Modeler, make everything with that. Yeah. But now you're basically concepting an idea because it, there's no concept. So you have to design it. And this is the quickest way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of techniques I like to use. Like you said, polygrouping is going to be key. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that this is why we've also added some other things here that people need to be aware of. I.e. now there are a couple things here, and then we're gonna get into some Z Model stuff where I'm going with this in a second here. This is just thinking I'm gonna 
I want to block something out, make some kind of looking character or looking thing, right? Um, let's see, like go back to Damien Standard. Maybe I want to do, do this and come up like that. And then that's going to come down like this, maybe all the way down like that. And then I'm going to make some kind of eye thing right here for him coming through there. And then again, this is, I don't go off the deep end, like starting to go like design like crazy like this. Just big shape, primary just shapes. Basic primary shapes, figuring this out. And then I'm going to use the modeler to do some stuff after this. But before we get into that, some things I want everyone to be aware of. Okay, number one, one of the new biggest features for me is because you're talking about polygrouping. So now what you can do as a user is start just masking out, like for example, this shape, hey, I didn't make a polygroup for this square in here, but I want it. So I can now do Use something masking. like this. And then now in your masking, okay, you have the ability to fill the region. And then that's completely filled with your mask now. Right? So this one has been a game changer for me. Oh, interesting. Can you do that again? I lost it for a second. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. So then I made a new polygroup. Okay. So it's just... You masked it. Mask for... out yeah, but... whatever yeah. you want. And then you just hit auto fill that's amazing that's game changer control w so the nice thing about this is obviously we can put any shape that we want and then tell it to fill it and it fills it for us you it, can just quickly extract that or do whatever yeah do or whatever group you loops. want with this yep so you can also do multiple shapes right so if you guys start just doing multiple things like this and it's gonna you fill can it up analyze it first so then it's uh... looking at it okay We'll turn off the polyframe. Then I can say, I only want this one and this one to fill. And then you say, fill the region and it doesn't touch. The oh, circle. wow. This is crazy. <laughs> so I didn't know this one for this. It's been a big game changer for me. That's massive, man. Like I, I can use yeah. this a lot for, cause recently I'm using Z modeler to make a lot of armors and stuff. And sometimes it's hard to mask exactly what I want. You know, I have to go back and forth on the mask cleanup stuff. Yeah, um, and what I would do with this, since this exists, right? I would make a new macro that does the auto region and automatically makes a new polygroup. I don't use macros. I need to get into that. Yeah, so then I can make a macro that does two things at once. It Interesting. Can, so that way I can say, hey, new macro, and I'm not going to change this. And so this is then it's a macro that it's looking at right can so you make one quickly that, so people can see do what can you make a macro with this to show exactly yeah. how you do it yeah so for example i'm gonna like say make a shape of like okay i want some kind of shape through here right yeah and so the next thing is going to be is i'm going to hit auto region and then hit control w so what i'm going to do instead is say let's make a new macro uh -huh. It's asking, hey, do you want to initialize ZBrush? In essence, restart. This is restarting ZBrush without actually turning it off. Oh, okay. okay. So I would not do this because you're working right now. That's yes. what it's asking you. Do you want to initialize ZBrush again? And I'm going to say no. So now auto region, okay, is going to fill it up. That's one. And then control the shortcut for polygroups, right? For control, control W. Yeah is that you want to look at, okay, group masked, right? So now that got polygrouped. And then this one also flipped the mask, right? So all your your ones right here are where you're going to have. So you can see that is the control W button. Yeah. So the one I clicked on is grouping the mask and then it flipped it automatically. Mm -hmm. so now, every time, let's say, now I want to say end the macro, it's asking me to save it. So I'm going to save it to my applications and I'm on a Mac. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to say Z startup. Then I'm going to say, I want it to be part of my macros. I'm going to put it in the miscellaneous folder and then call it whatever you want. Um, let's come up, let's come up with a fill name, uh, auto PG, we'll call it for polygroups, not Paul Gabriel. And then no, I don't want it to have any of that. So now in the macros, you don't have to restart. It's right there. Oh. So you now anytime, well anytime I do like a shape, right? Like this, you could come in here and hit this and see, boom, it does. That's it. amazing. 
I'm going to use this. So, and now make a shortcut. Okay. So now, hmm. now come in here, hold down that control alt, click on it and make a shortcut. I'm going to just say the number nine. So mm -hmm. now the number nine is my shortcut. So now as a user, I can say, hey, you know what? I need a polygroup right here. You would just draw out really quick now where you want that polygroup to be. And then now me, I just hit the nine key and boom, there you go. That's crazy. So speeding up your workflow is the goal here. Yep. So that's what I like to do. The other thing now that I like to do with this is because you're talking about polygroups and I love that because I think they're one of the most important features in ZBrush. Yeah, it makes everything so easy, especially for hard surface armor modeling. You yep. can do so much with it. Yep. So like this, right? If I want to put a panel coming up into here and then coming down into here and then here and then here like this, right? Yeah. The problem is you can see I'm bleeding into the orange. Yes. Polygraph. I don't want to do that. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the brush system to not do that. So oh. I'm going to come into my auto masking. And I'm going to tell it to mask by the polygroups. I'm going to turn the slider all the way to 100. Uh -huh. So now what happens is when I am in the purple here, we'll turn off just, we don't need to look at the lines right now. Yeah. So when I come up into here. It was just recognized. Holy crap, man. That's, that's amazing. I didn't know about this. <laughs> it won't touch. And now that's you can perfect. see these are perfectly touching now. Is there a way that you can, like, you see how you you use the damage standard brush to create those lines? Is there a feature to say, hey, make these polygroups based on those um, uh, dips, you know? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You can use different masking. You can use the mask by cavity and stuff like this. But since you brought it up, you can now as a user. So if you have a Damien standard like this, right? And you do this. Yeah. You can now just make that a polygroup with one click on the button. What? So if you do that for all of it, then you can just uh, auto group, hide everything and auto group. Let's do that because this is going to blow their, everybody's mind. Yeah. So in essence, drawing these out, right? So if yeah. you do a stroke like this and now you hit this button here, auto group, every time you make a stroke on this button, it makes a new polygroup. Oh, okay. interesting. It keeps so making a new polygroup for every brush. These are actually different, even though they look similar. Yeah. Color, they're different. So there is two types here. So there is a little dot that's closed here because it's so scared, it's closed. And that means it's, it's going to make new polygroups every time. Mm -hmm. If you open it and make it open, every time that you now draw, right? Hit this button, move you. draw, hit this button, draw, hit this button, it's the exact same polygroup every single time from this point on. Oh, interesting, because you turn off the dot, so it's not creating different polygroups. It's not creating a different polygroup every single Yeah, time. that's perfect. Okay, and what we did is took this another step further. Okay, so what I mean by that is, let's say, let's come in the back now. Let's start, okay, I'm going to want to do this. Let's go to Damien Standard. Let's make sure you have no mask. I'm going to do this, come up like that. Then I want to come in like this. And then I'm going to come across like that. And then I wanted to come up like this and then straight across. And then now I want it to come across like this. Okay, so we've made multiple strokes now here. So right? it's going to recognize all of that? So no, one click's only doing the last stroke. Uh-huh, okay. okay. So what I'm going to do now is come up here to my undo history. Okay. And go backwards, hold the control key, click on that now come back to where we are. So now you're going to have a, a control. Oh my goodness. Marker. I see what you did there. Okay. And then now <laughs> when you click this, they all get the same. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Because now you can actually hide everything except like you can keep the purple poly polygroup and just auto group it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you wanted to, yeah, you could do this and then do this. And then now you can have those auto groups. Yeah. Or, or since we're talking about Z modeler, Let's switch to Z modeler. Okay, let's turn on our lines this time. So right in here, mm -hmm. I'm hovering over this. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my draw size a little bit smaller here. It's on the face, not yeah, hovering okay, on the face. So it, I'm gonna go on the face. I'm gonna go to polygroup and something new. We've also added. I don't remember. I think this is in 2022. It might have been 2021. I'm gonna say now I want to fill it. Oh, interesting. And then now I can just click on a face and see. It, wow, so it recognize the, recognizes the border. 
it recognizes That's the poly group order. So now every time I click, see, I get that. So same I can technically group. fill these with the same poly group without even doing what you're saying, right? Yeah. This appreciates polygrouping border. It also will appreciate creasing, which we'll get to in a minute. So the reason why the polygrouping is so important is now we can bring in also other things like deformation and we can polish by groups. And what that's yep. going to start to do is clean all this up for us. Mm -hmm. Same thing. There is polish by groups. There's a closed circle and open circle. Open circle is way more strong. So it, the closed circle is, is looking at polygroup edges and only polishing those edges at the polygroup. Mm. So every time you use this, it's just only polishing those. Mm -hmm. With open circle, it polishing everything. So it's a lot stronger. Oh, I see. I see. So, so without this... this is being polished and all this is being polished. Where the uh -huh. other one's only polishing the where edges. my magnifier is. Yeah. Right? So taking this same concept, I'm going to switch in here. We'll turn this off for now. I'm going to come down here to my smooth brush modifiers. And I'm holding down my shift key right now. And right here, there are different. There's there's about sixteen smoothing brushes now, I think, in ZBrush. Sixteen. I want to say sixteen. I'd have to go double check and count, but I want to say we're at sixteen now. Wow. That's there's a lot. well, there's nine. I just used right two here. of them. <laughs> well, there's ten right here. There's ten here. Zero is this what you guys are used to as your yeah. standard. But now there's also the alt smooth. There's peaks and valleys. There's the cloth smooth. Right around, our, yeah, that's like 15 maybe. I got, I'd have to double check. So I like to change this to nine because now I can globally, I mean, not globally, but locally do that same thing where I can control oh, interesting. where I want this action. And then see, I can make this as much as I want. We just clean. shift. So that's or, like local if you want to do only a section, not everything else. Yeah. And then now only those poly groups, right, where they're meeting, you can yeah. see that all smooth. And for hard surface, this is a great start, right? You know, I'm going to get like you can very... separate the panel. Right. Getting so I separate. think, you know what, the part that people don't know yet, because they see these, they're like, okay, so what can I do with this if they don't use the model or much? You know, yeah. like how poly groups are going to be useful. If you can explain that as well, that'll be great. Sure. Yeah, so what I would start to do is stuff like this, right? So if we here globally just do this, just get this to a point where I kind of like the clean, the cleanliness of it, the clean of it. Just roughly, right? Because you can use the modeler to control it. Right. So, but I can also now just take these panels. Yeah. And then I can, before I even Z modeler, I can come in here and I can just, I'm going to turn off double and then make edge loop paneling. Mm. through there right and this i don't want them sit i don't want the panels sitting on top so right now see they're sitting on top of the surface yeah so that's why we have a different controllers here mm -hmm. okay so your elevation i can make it be a negative 100 in panel loop and see now they're not sitting on top anymore but they're yeah. still the panels mm -hmm. and then your poly groups you're getting so you're nice and clean in the middle yeah. So this has got a nice paneling that you're using this for. Right? Mm -hmm. So this can start being beneficial for us in this way. And then now that you have polygrouping, if you want to do switch to Z modeler, I can start also then using QMesh polygroup all. And then now you because I'm making polygroups, I can QMesh this in and out if I want to. Something like this is a little more dense. So I don't tend to do Z Mahler on something this dense because it's meant to be more for low polygonal, yeah. not not 227,000 polygons. Usually what I would do, I would separate that as an as an extract and you know use zero measure to make a very low res geometry to make to make the panel super clean and low res. And then I add cuts on the edges to keep the sharpness that I want. And then I subdivide it. So that way I get a very clean mesh, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it's not dense. It's super controllable, manageable. You can add, you know, rivets, yeah. holes, whatever you want in different sections. Yeah, let me show you something else that I would do, um, and like I like to do um, for this. I don't even need the polygrouping yet for this. It's just something doing the Damien standard thing 
and all that and still trying to calculate the uh q mesh yeah that's uh that's rough to figure it out <laughs> it's gonna take a bit and my, well it's trying to figure out all the edges where it's not clean yeah but really this this would have been better doing a step before i would have remeshed this actually first yeah that's what i would do i would remesh it <clears throat> i mean if i do it i would make all the uh groups and then remesh it to have yeah. clean mesh and then use group. the uh keep groups yeah but i want like i i i, I always love to have super clean low risk geometry you know like like we did in the past with box modeling that you had like Yep. You know, a low res mesh, and then you subdivided it to get, you know, a more high resolution geometry. But then I would line up all the cuts to make sure it's all flowing nicely between meshes, between yeah, panels. And I would keep the panels separate for something like this. Right. Yep. So here, this is what I, if I'm doing a design like this, and now I want to go the Z model route, right? Yeah. This is what I would do. I'm going to append something. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is for me uh i'm just gonna call it low so it's low and then in this case i'm gonna use the plane now that mm -hmm. is in the gizmo and i'm going to make it so it's just one face yeah okay then i'm gonna say all right i want it to be sized down like this i'll have it sit right about there okay that looks good to me all right and now <clears throat> i'm gonna in z modeler I'm going to do a couple things here. Number one, on the face, I'm going to tell it to do nothing, actually. I don't want anything to happen. Yeah. No face actions at all. On the edge, I'm going to switch to extrude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and want to cover that. I'm going to turn on snap to surface. Okay. And then on the points, okay, I'm going to also switch this move right here to snap the surface, uh -huh. right? And now I'm gonna just start building out this. Yep. So this is kind of what you might've been used to before um, yes. with like Maya and stuff. So you can build out like this. Now, what I wanna do though, is I can't really tell what I'm building, right? So yeah. you obviously can turn on transparency and not ghost, and then you can see what you're building and then just matching your polygons to where you want, right? And you can see I can taper it out, mm -hmm. taper it, and then keep extruding it out like this. I don't do it this way personally. I tend to actually take advantage of the dynamic. I prefer using dynamic subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And then I turn off the smoothness so that that doesn't do any kind of smoothing at all okay mm -hmm. and so i start moving these points where i want them to sit like that so it's gone see it's it's disappeared what it's doing is snapping to yeah. the surface so now i just start adding some thickness mm -hmm. right and then this and then i can offset it frontwards so now it looks like this but really, it's just an edge. I, it's just an edge and a single polygon. So even though it's a little crazy thick right now, it doesn't. It's not actually thick. Yeah, it's just so like now, to, to view it basically, right? Just to view it, and you're gonna have thickness in there eventually, anyways. And so this is all snapping and working the way that I would want it to work. Unless I want that there, and then maybe I want to bring that corner to there. So instead of extruding per uh, polygroup, you just create the mesh again. Yeah, I'm just recreating. So if I turn off dynamic and hit solo, this is what I'm doing. I'm just creating yeah. a flat plane right now. Right? And then so now if I turn dynamic back on. If you actually mirror it, it would create another edge loop in the middle. Or you If you just... do a mirror and weld, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll create an edge loop in the middle. That's going to snap as well. So then you have that, and then you can move that wherever you want. And then now, yeah, I want to come up with faces like this. And then I want those to snap there and then move this to where I want it to be. So this is now becoming more what I want. And if I don't want this, right, I can insert and Alt delete. And, delete so then, yeah. and then go back to the extrude, come like this. Then things like this, especially like this, see how it's rounded. You can also 
use the number of rows. Oh yeah, have mo but like when you extrude, it's gonna create multiple. Yeah, that's perfect. And then there also you can see you're taking on the curvature. Yeah, that's amazing. So, but I could control that as a user. However, without I want. letting go of the mouse, right? You just yeah, I'm using the control key. Oh, okay. To tell say how many for it to have. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. So in essence, I'm see so see the slider says ten now. Yeah. I can say you know I only want three, and then this is all I get. Right. So you can change it, or you can do it, you know, whatever way you want. So now you just you're just building now, and you're gonna get automatically polygrouping, and get yeah. what you need. So this is this is the approach I'd start to take, and if I'm starting from scratch building something that I wanna. Do you have. ever try to extrude, like extract polygroups and then clean up each piece instead of doing this, or you don't do that? I don't tend to do that um, for me, mm -hmm. um, but I know there are people that do do that quite a bit. I um, do that for when I create an armor for like like an ancient type of armor, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it's very effective. Um but I guess this is different because if you sculpt the design, then this this is a different approach. Yeah. You're basically retopologizing on top of your sculpt. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm yeah. using, in essence, I'm using my sculpt as my reference. Yeah, yeah. Right? So the sculpt underneath is my, instead of 2D imaging reference, this is my 3D referencing. And because yeah, yeah. where we were, going back being just quick and not being so worried mm -hmm. you can do stuff like so for as an example here let's see we'll load a model of mine what's up daniel let's see pilots load where are you here he is so you look at this guy so this you is the, oh, you made these the same way. This is exactly how I made this. Oh, that's cool. So can you show how clean it is, like wireframe and? Yeah. So this is all Z Modeler, and live Boolean. Oh, yes. interesting. So it's not even sub subdivided yet. Nope. This is the base, mm -hmm. which was built from that. Oh wow. Right, and so. Mm -hmm. Now I got this with Z modeler and then what are those else. um the eyes, the camera, how, how does how is that? Like is that is that just a high res mesh or no? Nope. Oh, you it's use live all low, This is all low poly. This is my favorite screaming across the wall favorite feature. So this is really just a cylinder like that. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. If this so is it. Low why why aren't you you like extruding, for example? Because I mean you can can you show the whole eye again? Yeah. Like you see all of those details that can be done with just extrude and um, like inset, you know, inflate. Yeah. So sure. why, why, why do you prefer live Boolean? Is it, is it just personal preference? No, I think cause it's way more non-destructive. What you're saying is destructive in the yeah. sense that you have to make decisions with your edge looping and what you're going to do and extrude it. I do do that, but for something like this, I might want to experiment. Ah, uh -huh, I see what you mean. Right. So I might be, you know, I don't want this. Okay. So for example, like this little vent right there, um, I didn't really know that's what I wanted there until I started yeah. experimenting. Same thing down here. So as an example, let's say we want to put something else. I don't know. Let's put something here up here on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to look at my list here. Mm -hmm. And I've got this sub tool, which is this. This is what's making the eyes. So yeah. I made this an insert mesh brush that is doing, um, in essence, a cut. It's a cutting tool. And I made it my own. I turned, I'll show you how I, you can make these brushes. They're really easy. So the insert Boolean brush is this is like a game changer, big time. Because it's just, you have all these right here now. Right. And then mm -hmm. now that I'm on a, a sub tool that is set to subtract. Yeah. So it's got to subtract. And then I have live Boolean on. I can come up here and say, hey, you know what? I wonder what would that look like? 
Oh, I if see. If I so put you can that mm -hmm. up here and say, do I like that? Yeah, you know? that makes sense. That's right. And so then... then I can turn on symmetry as well, obviously. And say, hmm, do I want this or do I want to actually, in essence, I want to move it, right? Yeah. So let's go back to this. We'll center it. And so now this, which you can't do with edge looping, is now I can position this. I can move it down here. I can move it up here. I can. So turn right now, it. this is this is rough, right? You make it, and then once the design is done, you're happy with it, and you want to be like, okay, this is the mesh I'm going with. How would you clean it up? Because, um, like like you said, the way if you model it, you have to know exactly what you're making, so it's destructive. You have only one option. You do it, and if it doesn't work, then you have to do it again. Especially those holes on the side of the head. It's hard to make those. I mean, it's not necessarily hard because you because you could split vertices, vertices and extrude them in. But then, if it doesn't work, you have to go back. So Boolean works better here. The only thing that I'm thinking about is how would you get clean mesh at the end? Do we have to retopologize it, or is it is there a way to get a clean mesh after you basically bake the Boolean? Well, your Boolean, you're going to get the results. The, the mesh is going to be clean to whatever you sent it. So, mm -hmm. like when you do a Boolean, it this is it's going to be this clean. The yeah. only parts where it's not going to be clean is where there's intersecting Boolean things yeah. that have small triangles. So yeah, you could clean it up by doing a Z remesh or doing mm -hmm. some hand retopologizing. Um, but also for hard surface, I don't necessarily need to clean up because it's hard surface. Yeah. So, yeah. but if you did want to clean up, yeah, you'd have to remesh it somehow. But then the re another reason why I like this is like, say if I come in here and now I want like something like this, right mm -hmm. and i want that to be again used on a subtractive piece so you can do stuff like this like there's tools. no way i'm yeah. going to box model that yeah this fast and yeah be like this experiment like this yeah absolutely. move it somewhere else wherever i want not only that but i can now just cycle through oh wow maybe i like something even better and then now go and box model that. that fast. <laughs> you're not challenging me. You're not going to. This no. Gonna That's going to take forever. It's going to take forever. And you're sitting there. This is kind of what we're talking about. You're in the old world of box. I'm like, okay, I got to sit. It's like we're doing math equations or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, how am I going to edge loop this? Okay, I got to a circle, but then it's got to have a perfect sphere shape, but then it's got indentions in it. Like, your brain goes crazy just trying to figure out the topology. Yeah. But if you're in the ZBrush world, you don't. Like, it's just open it, boom. Scale okay. it down and scale it up. Or I like that. Okay. You know what's interesting? Good. If you have a concept that you're following, you can just look at all of these uh, rivets and screws and designs and whatever, you know, cameras on the hard surface and all of that. Then you can model those, make the library quickly, yep. and then make the mesh a silhouette, like the primary shape, the first primary shapes, and then add secondary shapes, and then add those details everywhere quickly. Right, and then That's look, perfect. I, let me turn local back on. Um, I also forgot to turn on symmetry. Look, and I got symmetry because I was able to just turn the gizmo on. And then now this, see, it's swapping out symmetrically. Yeah, this is insane. And then now you take something like this, and now I go extender even. Can you hold control and duplicate it? Extend it, yeah. There, I just extended it, made yeah. it longer. And then, yeah, you can hold control and then tell it to make yeah, another that's... copy. I don't know if people know about this. This is super helpful, the control duplicate. Yeah, but I would, yeah, you could even go here. We'll go even smaller. Let's go smaller. Oh, it disappeared. Put it right about there. Let's go there. Let's actually extend it. I want to make it a little bit longer. Okay, so not only can, when you switch to gizmo, hold control to duplicate like this, but if you let go of control, we'll keep creating more for you. Oh, you don't, so you let really go of control, but you, this, yeah, this but you don't, you keep the mouse click, right? Yeah, so you, you keep it, so here, let's do it on somewhere where it's a little like, bit Visual. Like the ones, those panels you have on the top, the vent ventilation or whatever it is. Those? Yeah, like that, yeah, that's, that can be. That's how I did those. That's that or I... that or this, I actually tend to use, actually, this is a ray mesh. 
I love me some array mesh. Especially. Yeah, array mesh is dude. Like I, you can do crazy stuff with array mesh. I use it to make armor scales. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe you want the vent to be that instead. Yeah. And I don't know, or maybe I want it to be like that. I want it to be a lot more dense. Like this is what I mean. This is all non-destructive. Yeah. Where I can change yeah. things. I can figure things out. So to your question, that is why I normally don't split it up in pieces. Because then you're you're destroying, and then you're built, and then that's it. And now if you want to change things, you're stuck in the world of, oh, I got to reverse engineer and go backwards now. Yeah. I have a hard question I don't want to go you. backwards. Yeah, no. definitely. Absolutely. Like when you design, especially, like if you don't know what you're doing. Even actually, yeah, for hard service, this is very, very good workflow. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, do you mind to open my art station quickly? There is a character that I made um, like six months ago. And uh, there's a helmet. I have a scales on it. And they, these are scales are fitting to the helmet, the shape and everything. And it wasn't easy to make that. I want to see if you have any easier workflow to achieve something like that. So okay. if you open my art decision and then you can see yeah. on the second um, work that I have there, uh, or third one from top, from left to the right, the, the Persian Warrior, a lot of leather armor. So I did all of that in ZBrush with ZModeler and then I made the lowers in ZBrush as well. And I use a lot of yeah. Brush, ZModeler, um, I use Array Mesh. Yeah, Do you see it? I'm getting to it. Uh, so it's which let me, one? Let me send you a link quickly. Here, let me. Or you can bring. Yeah. So you see that the uh, the top right, that one. Yeah. If you open that, and then you see that helmet. If you go to the helmet. By the way, all of that is done in ZBrush. Z modeler, higher is lower is everything. Um, you see that the helmet? Top. There's a cl yeah. there's a close up shot. If you go down. You see that all the scales yeah nice yeah so how would you approach that because the scale is is i made a piece and then i had to use our image to, to duplicate it and then what i did i i had to reshape it with the formations uh with the, um, the the gizmo tool but it wasn't easy it was so you're it was talking really, about yeah this and talking about repeating the scales yeah the repeating a scale and I and I I made a I made a pattern I made the high res and low res at the same time. So when I duplicated it with array mesh, I have a high res and low res that are matching at the same time. So I didn't have to retopologize it. And then what I did, I basically I created the base shape of the helmet, and then I, um, you know, I matched the shape of those with the formation on top of the. You see that? Yeah. So I deformed it to match it to that dome shape. But I don't know if there is a way that you can achieve that. I don't think there is a way. I sure, mean, there's a, yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple ways really? to do this. There'd be, yeah, more than one way for sure to do this. Um, like actually, you, you can see. do the highers and lowers at the same time. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me see if I have. Uh, let me see if I have the medieval helmet that I did. If I have it on this card drive, I don't know if I do. Then we can just use that. Someone has a request. We'll check it, got dude. Um, after this, Paul is gonna check your message. Okay, I have it in a Cinema 4D file on this hard drive. Mm, don't look like I have the helmet itself. All right, but we can try. Let's build it one real quick. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's just like a, like a... Yeah, let's just let's just have some fun real quick. The only, the only part that was like a challenge for me was because I wanted to make the highers and lowers at the same time. Uh, so I so I made a very simple pattern, just, um, you know, that shape could be whatever. And I made the highers, I made the lowers, and then I made the different polygroups for the highers and lowers. And then I took that and I arranged it and matched it to that helmet shape. So that way I have both highers and lowers matching at the same time. Okay, so let's let's do a helmet real quick. All right, so let's pen. Okay, it's a little too dense for me. Let's go less dense. Cylinder, cylinder can work. Let's go with this one. 
bring this up. Oh, okay. So, and then let's make the bottom flat. Yeah. Turn it, position it, something like that. Then let's go ahead and switch to a deformer. Let's work symmetrically and let's start deforming symmetrically so the helmet fits a little bit better. Where I'd want it to fit. This. Then I'm going to start now. Let's make it actually start looking like a helmet a little bit more. Okay, you can cut that part, yeah. So I get rid of that. Let's get all the way back from the ears. Something like this. Let's see, yeah, like that. Whoops. Let's get rid of that now. So now we have something like this. Let's put display double on. Okay. So obviously what I'd start to do now is start refining this more. Obviously me, I'd like to use, I would probably use move infinite so I can start yeah. moving things. And then I know I would also make groups to make the panels because that one had like different panels, you know? Right. Yeah. So, but to do your little thing that you were doing with the uh, scale, um, there's a couple of ways we could we could attack this. Okay. So, the first one would be let's make let's make a scale real quick. Let's make something interesting. Uh, let's get rid of this. Something like this. Let's use the Mulder. Make it. Keep it simple, All right? So the modeler. What was the tool you used to basically decrease the poly count, remove the edge loops? That is in the gizmo. I'm using the gizmo, and the gizmo, in essence, has built into it uh -huh. all these shapes over here. Are in essence, the initialize, like the initialize ability uh -huh. that you have. Yeah. So this is when you click oh, on I one. See. Of these, then you can adjust. You're gonna, it have, the... you're gonna have a little cone. So here, if I yeah. duplicate this. And say, let's say, for example, I take the cylinder. So you have this cone, so you can actually make an inner radius. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know about I can, that. I can add this. I can turn it into a triangle. Amazing. I can do whatever I want. And because this is masked off, isn't touched. So it's using yeah. your location. So you can change your... the stuff locally as you want. Well, it's because this is masked off. Yeah. And I'm in the gizmo. It replaces whatever this is. Mm -hmm. so whatever's still not masked, when you click in here, and you click on something else, it replaces it. That's cool. So then if you're doing like that, see that one's gonna stay. And now I get this. And see the this has just got Oh, I see all those handles. Handles, yeah, that's perfect. Yep. I didn't it's just use the that handles. Before. I prefer using them. Mm -hmm. It's just faster. That's very helpful. All right. Uh okay, so let's do this. And then you wanna basically for this this pattern, yeah, and then you wanna duplicate it down because uh the second row is going to be different. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to also just give it a little bit of some fun shape here. Yeah. Maybe sharp edges on the sides. Let's do loop, loop, loop. Look at it this way. This and now I tend to crease. I use crease. I don't use crease. I just add edge oh, loops. I'm I'm a big crease. I'm the opposite. I hate crease. <laughs> I love crease. I don't have to have right all the whole thing and then. So how do you crease that? You see how? It... Oh, okay. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And let's add an edge loop here. Edge loop here. Symmetry. No, I'm building this not along the X. Mm, yeah. Let me flip it so it's actually along the X. Let's 
start adding some shape some shape to this And now I am not going to crease these. Let's do partial. Oh, mm, that's interesting. Now we get something. You know, I, I know what I, I kinda, would crease the top one. I kind of like because you know what happens if you if you scale it, you won't see that top section because it's it's going to be hidden under the. Yeah. So you you probably will see half of it. Two third of it mostly, because it's going to overlap. All right, and I'm going to go. Let's have. Let's see. Um, yeah. Okay, let's say something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that you have this, um, we can look at this in multiple ways right so like what you said in fact see this is just my eye now just taking over things yeah i want to i'm gonna make it be more rounded there. that's fine man let's all right so i want to make something i gotta, I gotta move on or else i'm gonna keep playing <laughs> i'm just gonna keep playing okay so this i'm gonna turn this into an insert mesh brush okay and a nano and so when I go back to the helmet, I can use this now and I can say, I want to use it as a nano. And I want to say all polygons. So when it draws out, I'm getting it on all of them. But the problem is right now, this is not, if you look at my pattern, um, yep. it's different. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what you mean. Yeah. I'll get to it. Yeah. You got it. over. I, you got it. Yeah. It's like alternate. shifting, right? Every other yep. one is in between yep. basically. That's easy though. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> so this is what this is this is what we're doing. What I'm doing now, right? Okay. Okay. So you can see, and then you, you can get your sizes. Yeah. And then you can again, you can have all these settings after the fact. You can rotate, rotate it. it. Yeah. You can rotate it any direction that you want. Rotate it off so it's off. sitting like yeah, this. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then you're not deforming because it's just following. Yeah. The or it's already there, right? Mm -hmm. So now going backwards here let's just get rid of it by making a polygroup so Every now polygroup, i'm going right? to say polygroup poly loop and i'm going to say all right let's make yeah. it a little bit yeah that this 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 oh i see what you did there okay, okay. and then now take this instead insert nano polygroup all Put those there. Let's get them where we want them to be. Uh, so let's have them be a lot bigger, right about there. Let's have it rotate a little bit off the X. Push it out a bit. And also push it out a little bit more. It should be bigger, I think. Yeah. So something like hard. this. Maybe not so much rotation. Something maybe right now like that. And then now I'm going to copy that. And then paste. Okay, and then shift the. But now this I can offset as well, so you can have offsets. Uh huh. Right. So now you can just offset. Interesting. This. So now it's and a matter now... of making the shape of the scale. Yeah. Um, and then I probably much. I can also not. Whoops. You got to rotate it. Then well. I can offset this back to sit a little bit lower if I want to. And then they're all going to start falling into place. Yeah. So if, so if you, you made it the same shape as the, the one I made, it would fit the right way. I mean, yep. so the top ones are, um, they're because they're, they're so big. The polygons are so tiny. Yeah. So, right. So this, the shape itself, right. So here, let's get rid of, right. It's all like yeah, triangle, 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 small. right. So you want consistent sized polygons, which is hard for a sphere. So you would go, I would go Z remesher. Then I turn my adaptive to one probably, and then remesh. 
and then now you're going to get see these are all relative to the same size you could try experimenting with this yeah but then they wouldn't fix the top i mean yeah so you're not going to circle pattern but what i would probably also do is taking this whole thought process now that i have this okay yeah i would let's see if i have it installed i would uh use not installed i don't have it installed on this system there's a plugin called nano mesh uh for zbrush mm -hmm. um here no mesh we just moved it so i gotta get back so or i used to know exactly where this is i might have to do it like quick and dirty with um two and a half d that's okay i'm trying to remember where we moved this to Brush. There you go. Extending ZBrush plugins. Okay, so this is where I'm going. Um. So this one. Mm -hmm. Nano tile. Okay, I'm gonna download that. And let's open that. And I am going to put that in my program as the plugin. Um, startup plugs. So again, I'm just putting it in my Maxon ZBrush C startup Z plugs. Putting it in there. Okay, let's quick save this. Shut it down. I want to save the shortcuts and let's relaunch. Do you prefer Mac over Windows for ZBrush? Or uh, I, I just well, I have the M1. And oh, it's okay. Pretty impressive. Really? Is it better than? It's pretty impressive. It How is... much did you pay for it? Like three grand. Better than a three grand Windows machine? Yes, leaps and bounds better. You're not going to build as good a machine for Windows at three grand that this is doing. Wow. Not even close. But that's my opinion. <laughs> uh okay so brush create insert new. how many gig of ram you have uh i think this one's got 64. okay and then uh how, how is it like a new uh version yeah i have the mac studio so this is what i have a mac studio okay the m1 max it's not even the ultra uh-huh and it's 64 gigs around it's awesome when, when did you get it when did i get it yeah for <sighs> last year okay so it's pretty new yep i have the i have an ultra sitting in front of me too i have even the better one oh. i have two of them so that's crazy this is my my personal one and then i have a company one that's an ultra i mean i wanted to get a mac machine but i was hesitant do you recommend well no the m2s are out now in the max they're, it's incredible they're amazing it's a desktop right or laptop desktop? yeah so it's it's well this it's it's not their desktop in the sense that's the Mac, that's the Mac Pro Studio. Yeah. This is the Mac Studio. So I am using this, not the Mac Pro. Which oh, they interesting. Just updated this as well. This is new now. It's got the M2 in it now. But oh, this, the is, new this is really expensive. Yeah, I'm actually like, thinking to the, get this, honestly. like No, no, no. You don't need that. Like, I'm telling you right now, what I am using, the Mac Studio, is plenty good enough. And it oh, starts wow. at two thousand dollars. And it's a small, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's only about as big as my head. What? How is it for video editing? It's fantastic. It's it's great. So here, okay. four grand is the so you can come in here. Let's see what you I don't even know. So this is going to be twenty four cores. The GPU is sixty cores. G and there wow. you go. It's sixty if you well, you want one hundred twenty eight gigs, then it's an extra eight hundred dollars. You want even more core GPU. It's another thousand. And um, what, what drive, you I don't use? care about the hard drive because I have my own server. Yeah, you can I have, use whatever. I have a NAS server. So I wouldn't go any more than two terabytes. That's it. So 4,800. 
However, however, what I normally do with Apple products is I don't buy brand new. I buy mm. refurbished. And it's certified. And it's certified by them. It's their refurbish. So I go to Mac. So mine's a refurbished. I save six hundred dollars on mine. Wow. And it so works Mac just Studio. as, as good go. as new. Here look, here's a M1 20 core, 60 so five grand. So this is what they have available right now for refurbish. Mm. So I just kept going into this and seeing what I can get. Well, this is kind of mesmerizing. I'm actually thinking however, to get <laughs> However, Apple right now, if you're a instructor or you're a student, they're giving student instructor deals right now. Oh, that's cool. Like I just bought my daughter an iPad. I got a I got 150 dollars. I got 150 bucks off the iPad. I got 20 bucks off the Apple Care. Then I got a $100 gift card, which then I just used to purchase her keyboard. Oh, cool. So I saved like $270. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually thinking to go all in Apple, but it's kind of expensive with monitors and everything. Like no, that. I'm just using, I'm using a Samsung monitor right now and I'm using mm. my Cintiq. Okay, yeah. I don't like Cintiq. Any monitor, you don't have to use that. I wouldn't use their yeah. monitor. You don't have to use their monitor. Dell has pretty good monitors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so back to this, right? So what you could have done is you could have used this plugin Right. This is called yeah. Nano Tile. Uh -huh. So it's using Nano Mesh and Array Mesh together. Interesting. It's using both. So I'm going to say create new tool. Oh, I don't have. Oh, it's not working on my Mac. I can't show it to you. Uh, I didn't get the updated one. So, anyways, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it dirty with the document. Then I'm going to give you the idea here with the document. So let's make a new document. Uh, let's just go 512. Let's make it pain painless make it easier for us resize yes okay and then let's draw out that this again t so now we have this okay so what i am going to do is just give you a, i would use that plugin because i'm i would get this perfect with the plugin uh -huh. uh, but it's got to get i gotta get the up it updated for the mac 2023. I don't have the Mac 2023 version. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make a marker. So I'm going to make a marker. And then now I'm going to just start dropping these. Where I want them. Obviously, I would have been better for me to rotate. Yeah, well, is, you, dirty version. You get the like idea. You'll get yeah, the yeah. Idea. Okay, and then now I'm going to come out of edit mode, and then I'm going to tilt a key it. Let's do. Let's do this next. Okay, there's my marker. You mm -hmm. can tap, and then go back in edit mode. Now I got this exactly where I want it. And drop it again, switch it, tilde key. Is this going to be a model or is it just like a... It's going to be what? Is it, a, is it going to be a texture or it's a model? Yeah. Texture. And then come out of edit mode, switch. That's good for texture. Like tilde key. But this would, I've already, I would have already been done if I had the plugin. Like, and it would have been perfect. The only thing with, like, with that is the one I have is geometry. So, yeah, that's text... why the plugin would work. Oh, so the plugin makes the same thing, but in geometry, basically. Well, no, 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 because you're just going to create like this, right? And then now you can just say, grab dock. There's your item, right? So, this is a texture um, that we can, well, let's turn it into it, let's export it here uh let's put it on the desktop save it let's now let's make our new documents let's go bigger all the way let's go ahead and draw this back out t right and then now this i would just quickly uv it now 
right? So you yeah. have different UVs. And now, by the way, UV can now appreciate creasing. So mm -hmm. you can use creasing. So for example, I can say, let's add a crease part right here. Let's crease this complete edge loop right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now when you click this, it's it just unwrap unwrapped, it. mm -hmm. but it's going to unwrap. So we do more. See, it appreciated. Yeah, it separates that. from that. So basically you can unwrap completely in ZBrush. Yeah, and then now you just go to surface, noise. Instead of this, you would just bring in that alpha I made. And then now it's in. Let's not do a mix right now. Let's do it by UV. Let's make it a lot stronger. And see, now this is using the UVs. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's kind of like you're trying to make it into a sculpt, basically. Yeah. So see, now it's, it's wrapping based upon, upon, around, based upon your UVs. Yeah. This so is going to do is... that, but this is actually a good thing for other stuff. Like if you want to make some pattern on the model, you know? Yeah, this is exactly what I would do. And then this is also, this is not married to it right so when you yeah. when you do a bpr we actually show you the result if oh you're interesting applying it mm -hmm. so you'd be able to see it oh now. i see so if you have a perfect uv then you can yeah um yeah. how do we separate it as a geometry because like i so, said on my model basically if you look at it it's a separate object and then i have the low res and high res you know so it's a clean model for for game assets Mm -hmm. So, and there is like the silhouette, it's not like flat. Yeah, but you're not going to just bake it with a normal map? Yeah, yeah. So, but but if you look at it, um, those panels, they have, they have, uh, you know, like, um, they're 3D, basically. You can go underneath a little bit. There's like some, um, how do I say it? Like, um, they're not like baked as a texture, you know? Right. You're, it's yeah, actually you're modeled these, on these the lowest. Actual, these are still individual pieces yeah. of geometry. Yeah. yeah, they're connected now as one piece because, you know, on the lower as I merge the vertices and all that. Yeah. But but there is like, if you look at it from angles, it's a 3D object, basically. Yep. And then I bake the normal map from the highest to the lowest to get those extra details, you know, creases and things like that, sharp sure. edges. Yeah, this is something where I would have personally, you know, doing this, I would have just made, so these are laying, per I would have used, nan I would have used nano mesh. Mm -hmm. And they just made this uh, its own panel. Uh, right? yeah, so that's I would have looked at this instead of even doing this, I would have looked at this thing and said, okay, let me more look at it in this sense. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That's, that's a panel, right? Yeah. And then the one next to it is another panel. Mm -hmm. And then the one next to it is another panel, right? Cause you actually don't need that. You just need this portion. Yeah. You just need the half right? of it. So then this yeah. are, these are my panels. Yeah. And then when you now go and turn this back into a nano, it is geometry, right? Yes. So brush, create, insert, new, brush, nano, and then go back to the helmet, right? And then all you're looking at now are these by panels, right? So you want this, this, yes. this, this, and this, right? And then now this, polygroup all, you're drawing these out, going to nano, and let's show placement. Let's rotate them, make them a lot bigger. Have it rotate out along the X. Okay, yes. and then now this, you're copying this. I'm just drawing this out and then pasting, but now this has got to get offsets. In the X. See, no, this is done. this is my problem with that, because the shape changes on the top, they are not as clean. You see what I mean? Like, yeah. When I make this, usually I have high res and lowers at the same time. So when I duplicate it, that's why I used array mesh and duplicated everything so that the low res is already there, and then I bent it over with deformation. I couldn't come up with a with a way to do this because I wanted to do the highers and lowers at the same time. Like if you look at my mesh, the lowers is perfectly uh, watertight, it's clean, 
there's no, uh, you know, but it was, it wasn't easy to do it, honestly. Yeah, I would probably remesh this. So all the, the polygons are also getting smaller. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge of it. So if it was flat, like this speed, so they, they're equal going. Yeah. On. If it was like for the chest armor, like if you look at my mesh again, my, my portfolio one quickly. You see there there is those on the chest as well. Like if you go down on the back, uh, no, up, 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 up. See those on the chest? Mm -hmm. That would work well with that because all the, like, it's just a panel. All the polygons are exactly the same. See even the back side. Yep. Because you can make all the polygons perfectly a square and the same size. The helmet was a big challenge. Right. So you, you took more of the approach of, Oh, let's see like I basically made a flat panel and I matched it to the helmet and then I removed the extra pieces with the... You did something like this and then like the approach you took too was you're going this. Array mesh, yes. Arraying it, then I repeated it. I don't know. Yeah, obviously my, my mesh is more, more uh, like you did it quickly, but mine is like this. So when I array mesh, the lowers can match perfectly, right? And then yeah, I have yeah. this and this. And then I have in between. So basically mine is more like I have this shape and then on the bottom, I have this shape, um, like this, see what I mean? Yep. So that way, when you duplicate it, you get a perfect design basically. Yep. Yeah. You get a perfect fit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that's more work, obviously. We don't want to. Yeah. But you could, like you said, like you could do this. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. And then rotate it. That way you can do it panel by panel. I think this one is not matching. That's weird. Something like this. Center it. Reshape. I guess you have to reset it. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's not center. And then now append a new switch to this. And let's go back to this. Let's have them be more like that. Oh. And then let's also rotate along the y here mm -hmm. yeah that could work potentially and then let's append a new and then yeah that could potentially work how many do i want this is actually perfect to to create a snake for example yeah yeah i've done i've, I've used it to also like create a brush i said it's too many. yeah for the brush as well so let's say I'd say how many rows, let's say, let's just say something like this. Yeah. Okay. And then now this is still low, low, low topology. Yeah. And then, so now we just need to convert it all. Make mesh. Make a mesh and make a mesh. The mesh is composed of multiple. Oh, a... uh, I have. Yeah. Subdivision. Oh, rules. yeah. You have the subdivision there. Now you have this, right? And then now mm -hmm. take the gizmo. I see. And then you Deform. can either do deformer or you can mm -hmm. do taper and have them start tapering down, like taper it down like this, right? Or switch to the deformer. And Scale. Then yeah, this is better. Actually, you can control it more. Have no dots here, no dots there, no dots there. So you're only these. Oh, I have it on an angle. Hold on. Let me reset. That might help. So now the taper should be. Yeah. Yeah. Active. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Because here you can remove the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah, that can work. Deformer and then scale the top, this and then just scale them in. Then we can add a row in between. Yeah, this could be a better approach. And then you could accept that. Add another deformer, add a row. Now have it start bulging out. 
Yeah. Actually, probably two rows. That way you can have a little bit of control. Yeah, I think this approach is better. Even though the top is not exactly, uh, you know, matching, but mine is the same. Like, mine is not... I mean, it, yeah, this is... This works. You could do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because the top is also capped. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to see that you're going to have, like, you have, yeah, you have design yeah. in here. Like, yeah, you've got this capping it. Yeah, got... even in reality, it's like that, right? If they wanted to make these, it wouldn't be easy but to, to make all of that no, by hand. So no. they would cap it. Yeah, they would just cap it. Yeah. So there's just how many do you want, right? I, I Going back to the beginning, all the way back to the array part, I probably would have done a lot more. Than what we have like yeah you have to back. make it perfectly make sure all the edge loops are, are matching lowers is matching and then it's a bit more work it's not as quick right so i would be here we don't need this there we go and let's center it take it to the home so yeah i probably would have done like probably something more like i would have done repeating maybe of like 48 i don't know I'm guessing the number then again, rotating along the Y, 360 degrees, mm -hmm. and then pulling that off until you get a way perfect off. match. So you have a lot. Look at it smooth as well. So what does it look like smooth? So you said something like they're, they're, they're touching. Yeah. And then you say you're appending and you want the same thing. And so now I just want to move that one up. But then rotate it slightly. And then rotate it slightly so you can use this to rotate or you come in here and i just wanted to rotate yeah i'll rotate with z, z uh with the um, array mesh it's more accurate like if you do i guess it's like oh it's like different than what i thought okay something like this and then i need to go back right i went back and rotated this, and this is the beauty of a ray mesh, is okay, there, that's mm -hmm. sitting where I want it. And then now it's just about, okay, how many of these am I going to want from here on out? So then you make this, and then you just say, how many of these do you want to repeat? Oh, interesting. That's And see, awesome. now it's a lot more dense. So this is, yeah. getting, this is more closer to your helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now you just do the same thing we just did. Turn them all in the mesh. Or I can actually, in, in topology geometry, you can say convert BPR to geo and automatically converts them all to geo. Oh, cool. And then you have all your polygrouping still too. Yeah. From the original mesh. And then now it's just deforming. So going back to the deformers, right? And then now it's just coming back to the deformers and figuring this all out. And then just are doing stuff like this yeah and then you can remove the extra parts if they're not yeah fitting, whatever you, you know. don't need you get rid of yeah the good thing about this is you can you can add actually more deformer vertices or edge loops and then you can because the top part is getting a stretch right as it goes a smaller but then you can push it down as you go up yep so that way it's it's gonna match yeah you see yeah. like yeah. it's gonna scale it slowly so you won't see the the like like a massive transition basically it's gonna gradually change in size which is what we want. Yeah. So there's you, something. You can like actually that. make a lot of uh, architectural structures with this because Unreal Engine 5 with, with Nanite and stuff, you know, if you want to make yeah. dome shapes and things like that. Yep. This is perfect. There yeah, this go. works. That's amazing. I see there's they got like into a, a uh, hardware. There was a question somebody was asking before we got down this rabbit hole. Yeah, there's like, if you go up, somebody's asking, uh, this is regarding pattern Pattern02 Pattern. brush, whatever it is. Do you see that comment? Uh-huh. Yeah, you can change that to your own. You can change it to whatever you want. So that's just a sample brush that we made to show you. First of all, let me just tell you what it does so you have an understanding why this brush exists in the first place because it's part of an addition we made. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Brush, pattern. So this pattern two and pattern one, okay? Mm -hmm. This was made with an image. So in essence, the image is attached to the brush. The brush. So when I turn, in essence, it's doing the stamp over again. 
Okay, and if I turn, it's doing it over again. So we did this because if you were to do this, okay, and keep sculpting, and you can see what happens on the side. It gets yeah, stretched. Stretching. Because this is like a 2D image being projected in a zebra. way. So that's why it's called zebra. What we've done is this is using two things. This is using the alpha that you see, and there's another alpha in surface noise. This is why one of the main reasons why we made surface noise be its own window. So that we're able to now use surface noise in a situation like this, where we're using it on the brush now. Right. So mm. this image, so it's using two images now okay mm -hmm. and so this has got a scale of its own to it here so now when i sculpt see they're smaller right so it's using this alpha to kind of add the scratches on the cobblestone but it's using the other alpha to be the cobblestone okay and it's mixing it's allowing mixing to happen but what's key to this are these other options the low projection local projection mode is the key one of the key points that's telling the brush to look at these locally so when i do this and then i do this that's it's a little it's, it's just the same you can see it's just the continuation it's almost like the alpha is being repeated infinitely across the document yeah the problem is if you're doing something like this it's going to go to the side getting the stretching on the corner <laughs> right and then so even if you come to do this and you do this you're never going to get cobblestones never yeah. going to happen so what we're doing is we're telling now how about we attach the locally to the brush so wherever your brush is that's where it's going to sculpt and then there's a dynamic scale so what that means is i can dynamically change the scale by my pressure sensitivity so is this my using harder, the surface bigger. noise or is this is this a brush like this is a brush using surface noise oh so you can, can see you... i can push harder and get different scales. Can you explain how to, how you use this from the beginning for those who don't know? Cause I'm not sure if people know how to make this exactly, or do you have anything that you can share? Yeah, this like is just, uh, if we're making it from scratch, first things first is this brush okay, is just the standard brush. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. And then this brush. So if we go standard, then we said, Hey, let's, let's use one alpha on it. And we use like this alpha right here, right? Yeah. So we said, okay, that alpha. So now what we're going to get is, is this. Yeah. But it's not clean, right? Right. So all it is, is just that alpha being repeated, repeated, repeated. Yeah. Okay. Then we said, let's go into the brush system and let's use a noise in here. And then we loaded another noise. So we can grab the one I made here or right here. Here's, here's some better ones, actually. There we go. There's a good one. Huh, I already had one. Okay. Oh, you already had it. <laughs> there had one. So there you go, right? So now this is now being used multiple, right? So this is doing two things here. This is using this noise with the noise I just loaded. So now how, I want how is it connected to the surface noise? That's the part I'm confused. So it's connected to the surface noise because we've ripped out surface noise and it's using this noise well hold on a second let me turn off my camera oops okay go so it's using this right i set my scale that i want uh-huh that's repeating i don't want any mixing uh-huh okay so this is all i want i can push and pull yeah however i want it this is setting your scale of that noise and you hit okay and then now when I sculpt, I get that noise. Oh, I see. Uh, can you show me? So where do you get the surface noise? Is it under brush? Yeah, under brush. Oh, I see. Under brush and then surface noise. Yep. And so now every yeah. time I sculpt, I'm getting, if I turn this off, then I'm just going to get the scale. See? Oh, interesting. So I'm this combining an alpha good. with with that. Yeah, this is amazing. And then if you just keep sculpting with one brush, then it's going to give you a perfect uh, scale. If I just keep, no, if I keep rotating, the idea was I keep rotating, I still get the same thing. Oh, it doesn't matter. I see. That was the goal. How it's would really be... good for organic stuff. Yeah. Really like... And, like there is, there's also the pattern one, which is actually doing see a pattern. Mm, yeah. And then if I rotate, I get it again here. 
So when you keep when you click and hold the mouse, is it gonna like make the pattern even everywhere, or it's like basically brushing on top of itself it, again and again and again? It, look at it as again, it's an infinite repeat of the pattern mm -hmm. on the on camera plane, right? Yeah. But now it's saying, but you're using your brush now as where yeah locally, no matter where the cube is facing to that, give mm -hmm. it the correct pattern. Yeah. Every time you stroke, give it that right, the right pattern that you want. Mm, I see. Or if you would have turned, if you didn't have this on, then it's not going to give it like if I turn this right, right here, it looks good. But maybe here, see, it, it's streaky line. Yeah. Because it's an image that's being projected. Yeah. yeah. Brain, that makes right? sense. Based upon, and it only goes in the Z in essence. It's being projected from the front, way. basically. Always yeah. direction front. So if you're doing this, the pattern looks good. But the minute you get to the side, the pattern's garbage. Yeah, that makes so sense. So what we did is instead of, okay, this idea Local. that it's always projecting forward, okay, but now allow it to be just actually attached to the brush now. So as I'm doing this, and then I can come here. So we get rid of the cube. Let's reload the cube to be a clean cube. So now when I'm doing this, I get the pattern here. Uh -huh. Let's do the dragon pattern. I get pattern, the pattern, if can, and if I rotate, a... I get the pattern. If I rotate, I get the pattern. Yeah. If I rotate, I get the pattern. You yeah. couldn't have, you couldn't do this before until we added that feature. Mm. That's pretty like, cool. We just added this, and I think this was just added in 2022. This is one of the new features of 2022, mm. if I remember right. And then yeah. you have a dynamic scaling, which is using your brush size to dynamically. So if I go with a smaller brush size, see the pattern smaller. If you, if you don't use... Dynamic is scaling, then it's going to just keep the same scale everywhere. If you use dynamic again, then it's just no matter. Yeah. Yeah. It's that the makes same sense. scaling everywhere. It goes based on the surface noise um, yeah. settings, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it's using that instead, right? And yeah. then this is your scaling up the noise. This is making it three point, in this case, 3.7 times. Mm -hmm. scale, right. So if you put it at two, and then now there's a range. And so now you can use your, in essence, your, your strength pushing down. The lighter you are, the smaller it is. The mm. harder you are, the larger it'll get as well. So that's, that's also cool. this and this are working together to do that. So not only do you have your brush size, you also have this also, and they're working together also with pressure sensitivity. That's pretty cool. That's and then awesome. that's when we started doing other things like this, where you can actually have multiple alphas and multiple textures attached to a brush. And then use pressure sensitivity to swap between them. Like that's mm. new to that was 2021 feature. So there's that's just cool. it's the rabbit hole going down the rabbit hole. There's a lot. Yeah, if you use this, this this can be good for like creating uh creatures with the scales, dragons, you know, dinosaurs. Yeah, if, things um, like that. Yeah, if I yeah, stuff like that or Especially environments. Think yeah. about environments have different, you know, rock. You can make it bigger and smaller, bigger yeah. and smaller, right? So, like the original, this was the idea of this brush. It was okay, I can make really big rocks, small rocks, big rocks, and all I'm doing is just changing my pressure sensitivity. Mm. What if you want a clean rock, like all of it to be exactly the same size, and you know, not overlap? So that way you have to turn off the dynamic mode and, and just sculpt. Yeah, then you would have to turn off and just tell to just use the alpha uh, in Noisemaker, right? Yeah. So you'd probably do this and then see it's the same. Oh, I see. But then but yeah, you're going to lose yeah. the ability to do this. Yeah. And then you're not going to be able to do that. I mean, for the for environment textures or tileable textures, this can work. Yeah, for environment, yeah, because you're just going to be flat anyway. Yeah, yeah. One side. You're, you're done. Yeah. And then you're using that alpha with the noise maker is what you're doing. Yeah, this is a but there's there's a you know like this. Now you can have another alpha here. So when you're sculpting, see like there's a combination of both alphas now. Oh, interesting. So you yeah, see that mixed when I sculpt, see that it's got three kind of strokes yeah. there plus this alpha. So this is using both alphas. Mix them together. Interesting. Mix and then it, depending on how hard, see, look, I'm pressing hard. I only get the one alpha. If mm. I press soft, 
then see I'm mostly getting the other the one. Second alpha. And you can control that with this. Right? So this is in essence your pressure sensitivity. Right? So now it's mostly that alpha. Because you know, now I mean the hardest thing about this is remembering all of this. Yeah. ZBrush has so many things that <laughs> Right. You so know? you see this? Now yeah. I'm getting more of the second alpha, more than even the first. Like I'm really getting those three. Yeah. I'm really Stronger getting those. That. Right. And then you can do the same thing with the texture. Like you can say, give me green here. And then give me a brown for the second one. Let's go ahead and turn on MRGB, color fill object. It's got the green. Let's say, let's go now, color fill object. Okay. And so now I want this texture to be that. And then now I have these two. So now you can paint, see it's mixing them. Mm. And if I push harder, it's only the green. If I go lighter, then it's only the brown. Yeah. And now it also only is the other alpha. So you think about this, this brush, I can make these two things be something when I'm light. And then I can make these two things be something when I'm pushing hard. And mm -hmm. then if you're pushing medium, it blends between the two. But you can control that with these sliders. You can control mm -hmm. that with this. And the texture one is controlled by this. So whatever one, if you want more, always be more brown. So you can, and just see, I got to push really hard to get the green to show up. Mm, really hard. There's the green. And now blend it in with the brown green blend it in the brown green blend in with the brown so now it's use... like having multiple brushes built into one do you use a uh, zbrush for texturing at all i don't use it for i just do it for like some coloring uh, and visualization do i use zbrush for texturing? you darn right i do here you go uh let's see <laughs> uh do i, I do everything it? in painter or unreal engine procedural no 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 i don't i know i'm not a gamer so i don't <laughs> it's different that. yeah I, I just but I yes i do here let's see if i have him i'm pretty sure i have him let's see yeah. on this one let's see nope is it that one let's see nope it's not this one but let me see how long I... have you been at pixelogic so far uh years? going on 16 years yeah that's a long time long time i changed many many jobs over the past 16 years yes <laughs> studio artists usually do right it's yeah very rare for a studio artist texture for painting here we go uh let's see you never wanted to try studios no <laughs> it's a very very firm no, no. <laughs> just no <laughs> no no thanks i if i if i was gonna do anything i'd be doing uh like well my freelance stuff is toys that's yeah that's, i would jump in just make toys and do that full time how much uh i don't know if i can ask this if you cannot answer don't but how much flexibility you guys have at um your job do you do you like do a stuff and then come up with ideas and programmers add them to the to ZBrush, do you come up with features and yeah, yeah, yeah that's because part of you, my job. You're, you're an artist, right? But at the same time, yeah. you're a software de software developer. I don't know if people want to know or are you? Interested yeah, I don't share? write any code though. But that part of my job is coming, helping come up with the features and then testing them and pushing them and then coming up with the features, helping coming up with all the features we're doing. Yeah, um, and then testing it or yeah. Here you go. So here is a completely one hundred percent texture the model of my gremlin that i'm actually having 3d printed in color right now as we speak oh so you print the color as well yep so this is 100 okay. percent zbrush painted oh i didn't go anywhere else it's all zbrush the whole that's thing. pretty cool how do you make it um that's interesting like uh, i don't know about zbrush texturing much but how, how do you make the, those bumps and areas to be different colors and creases to be different colors uh i was using a, i use a lot of it's actually just going the old school way of things here let's let's re here the lighting's just really extreme because i was also this is my render lighting so let's do this 
And then one random question is which part of the job you do is the most interesting to you? Like you're, you would be like super excited. Yeah, I want to do this, you know? Uh, the most exciting part is coming up when we come up with a feature that's really like, oh, this is going to be a big one for everybody, right? Oh. Um, that's that's what usually gets me going and gets me excited, especially uh, I've been a big pusher of hard surface mm -hmm. for the last 15 years. You know, the first year I was there, I was just figuring all the ropes out and doing everything. But once we started, I'm like, look, ZBrush is known for organic, but what we're not known for is hard surface. What can we oh. do hard surface wise, right? So I've been a big pusher of that forever trying to just keep coming up with new features um that we can do also hard surface along with organic so there you go this is a better look of him paint yeah and then there's his eyes so this is 100 percent zbrush that's everywhere. actually pretty good everywhere like so it's using some old school techniques that they would use um everywhere like in, in painting for real Mm -hmm. uh, I'm using a lot of that, but all this, and then I'm used to using a lot of masking. Mm -hmm. So you mask right? by I'm cavity a, and things like that. Yeah, not, well, not even just that. I'm a big fan of particularly two. I'm a big fan of this one, Peaks and Valleys, and Smoothness. So I love this mask by Smoothness. Like this just, here, we'll pick a really strong color. Uh, let's pick a red. So you guys can see this. And then let's go with turn just RGB. Oh, let's see that alpha's coming. Let me turn off the <laughs> turn off this. We don't need the noise. All right. So see this. Okay. See, it's looking for the parts that are smooth. So the parts that's not getting painted on. Uh -huh. Right. So then I start to play with this. Okay. So I start going, okay, let me have a bigger range. Unless Can't you guys brush... add that into the brush instead of mask? Because masking sometimes take time to create the mask. No, this is this is very different. Oh, I see. This like I wish not... there was a way that I could do you could do it real time with brush and just say, hey, don't paint the you know just paint the cavities or just paint the occlusion area. Uh yeah, you could you could do that. There is ways you could mess around with that. What's up, Kurt? Welcome. And then the peaks and the valleys is a nice one. Right? So like in here. So I'll hide the mask. So while mm. I'm painting, I can see what's happening. Yeah. So you can see the spots that it, the red's going only. Yeah, it's not in the cavities, right? Let's see? It's yeah, it's the peaks and the cavities. Oh yeah, but there is like those sharp cavities, like the um they don't change, do they? Like you see that on the neck area specifically? Yeah. There are lines or Yeah, those are deep, deep, deep yeah. cavities. So they're they're masked off and then but you can flip it, right? And then mm -hmm. like you could do that. So flip it and then just do paint this. those, yeah. And then now you got that. So it was a lot of the paint job was a lot of this just using these built-in masks, these peaks and valleys, the curvature and smoothness, and then yeah, mask by cavities to just, and it was building up in layers. So I first just filled it all with one green. Then I started building up a little bit more greens and some oranges and some, then I picked a very light, more beige-ish, yellowish green. And that became like my belly. And then I went into the armor here. And then the ear is the old school, um noodling technique mm -hmm. so you can even see it all this whiteness that's in there that's noodling is what they call it mm -hmm. back in the day um so that's a very popular technique amongst like artists that were in like the cg world i mean not yeah. i mean in the film world that were actually clay sculpting and hand painting like they would do something like this right pick a color like that and then now they would start bringing in like blues and say okay there should be some blue in here blue in here like cavities where your blue should be so you should have some blue coming yeah up you paint by here. hand that's i do that as well when i make creatures and stuff i would paint everything by hand first and then add 
uh, like basically primary co colors, even for armor, honestly, like in, in Substance yeah. Painter, when I make armor textures and things like that. I'll just yep. get the main, then, main color and then add the pattern. Yep. And then yellow should be where there's bone, like there's a bone real close to the skin. Yeah. Right. And then I go back to the original pink color and I start pushing it back in ways, but I start like doing noodling. So mm -hmm. you're taking this and you're making little noodles like this. Yeah, that takes forever. It breaks it all up. But if you want to go faster, then you switch to drag rack and you, you pick an alpha. Yeah. They the alpha like... Is. Tiny alpha. Where are you? This that one. one, yeah. And then now you can see you can just... That's my favorite alpha. I use it for for skin. I used it for a skin, you know, sculpting when I sculpted faces and stuff. Or wings. Yeah, so like this, you yeah. You're just trying to break up. And you yeah. go smaller when it's closer, bigger when it's out further. You're just trying to break that up. And then you start getting another color now. That's more like this skin tone ear color that I want. Yeah. So I grab this and I find, get a different, like more stronger color. And then now I just start slowly switch the spray. And then now I just start blending in that stuff now too. And then this is where now I start bringing in masking and go, okay, I want to mask, mask by the cavity. So you go to mask by cavity. Let's go full intensity. Boom. So then there's your cavities, right? Yeah. So I want to flip. I want the cavities and then I hide the mask. And then I just slowly start putting where I want that, right? And let, let the sculpt do the work for me and ZBrush do the work for me. Mm -hmm. So let me put that kind of out there on the edge. Okay, it should be a lot pretty stronger through here, through there. Okay, clear that. And then this is when I'll switch to mask by smoothness. Start to see what this is. Oh, yeah, it's, it's broken in this version. That's right. This is broken in this version. So we'll peaks and valleys. Right. So like that. See, I like that right there. What just happened there. Mm -hmm. Then blur it. And then now this is going to be a, a little bit more of a darker. Dark. Tone. Yeah. Dirt and stuff. And then that, now so. just paint that in. Like it's even when I made him, like when I was making him, see, like, see, and then you're going to pull, you're not going to be like this. Yeah. Water, yeah. Right? Of course. You're going to be like this. Um, even when I was making him, every single scale you see here, I hand did one at a time. Oh, you did? No, oh, okay. Al no alphas anywhere. On when, when you did, did, did this, like we, when we talked about it last time, you had it printed and all that. So this is like a few yeah, years old. I've got him sitting in the corner. He's all print, printed up. I printed him here at my house. Um, and it's massive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 24 inches. I'm working on a four foot tall one right now. Oh, damn. <laughs> to be a decoration at the house that's crazy yeah so but all this is one one at a time one scale at a time i did not use any alpha i just wanted to do kind of old school have some control here with it and so that's what i did yeah i mean honestly like doing good work yeah you can use a lot of tools and stuff but sometimes it it's just hard work you got to put the work in to get it good yeah, put some effort in there. Yeah, there's no quick solution for everything. You can hack some stuff here and there, even with all the features ZBrush has. But you still have to like do the work. Yeah, this, right? All I did for this was uh, for the scales. I did so I divide it up. I did some clay buildup like this. Mm. But I used thick skin as my main tool. So I dropped this down, I think something like 10. So then when I'm doing this, see it plateaus. Yeah. You it see, stops. actually, that's interesting. Uh, I have a creature in my portfolio. If you want to look at it, it's, I did it the same way. And then I, I used noise for, um, like if you go back to my, not this guy, that shield is all substance painter. So if you go down a little bit uh down down on the right side you see that uh right that that one yeah so the, the skin i used alpha but then if you you see like there are areas 
um like i sculpt it everywhere basically i use an alpha yeah. just to populate it and then i started to, you see how there's like different uh stuff on this skin especially in the back it's all sculpted because there was no way to make this look good you see all of that is sculpted yeah that's awesome that's yeah all, it took that's me a while to to make i mean you can you can imagine like even for the for the arm you see the like this section for example the skin is different. Every section is, you know, I used an alpha, uh, elephant alpha or something like that. But then I had to like, like you did exactly the same way with the brush that you just showed. Yep. I had to sculpt, maybe use some damage standard and things like that to make it, uh, make it look good. Uh, I think that, these... looks awesome. that looks dope. Yeah, this is, I, I miss working on it. Honestly, it was fun. This part And then too. Billy, no, I did not sculpt symmetrically the scales. I didn't want them symmetrically. That's what's going to make it look better. So it, granted, it, look, it took me way more hours than someone that just would have used an alpha, right? That's the point yeah. of it. Like someone that used an alpha probably would have been able to do all those scales in a day. It took me, you know, four, four times that time amount of time because I'm literally doing one scale at a time and I'm not symmetrical. Yeah, I wouldn't do symmetrical, honestly, when it comes to stuff like that. Unless if it's for production, you just want to, like, do it and no one sees it in, in a movie or a game. Sometimes you do, depends. Yeah. Wait, someone but, was asking, is there a way to mask by layer? You mean using the actual layer layer system? I guess that's that, what's... They do, that does store um, a mask. Like when you make a layer, are you talking about these layers? I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah. This, yeah, this. If you make a mask, this is being stored in the layer. So when you sculpt like this, right, you're doing this, and if you turn the layer back to not in record mode, if you turn it off and on, it goes away. But there is a mask. So if you go back and record, see that mask comes back. I think he's saying if you can also like paint on the layer, but then mask after. Like, let's say you have three layers, but then you want to be like, oh, on the first layer, I want to change some stuff. So I'm going to mask, create a mask based on the first layer. See what I'm okay, talking so, about? So you can also, if I do a stroke, okay, you guys can come into masking and you can mask by the stroke that you just made. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Not only that, is so every stroke right so you can mask if so if you're doing this right I get it, there see it keeps masking the last stroke i make but if you use the control like you did but for if you the other use one. your undo history now you can go all the way back make a marker and now hit this and so all of them go. get masked there you go That's and this useful. works not with just sculpt it also works with paint Right, so if you fill this, and then now we grab a color like this, right, and now you want a mask, it'll also get the paint, right? So if now if you want to go backwards and make a new marker, okay, and then now you say mask, change points. See, the orange is now masked. Oh, that's awesome. And so now if you paint with blue, right, you want to be painting on it. And then this is done by pressure sensitivity as well. So if you don't want, you can turn this circle on and then now it's a hard mask, see? Mm -hmm. So it won't even touch it because the default mask is looking at your pressure and giving you a, a gradient mask. And then this, this open circle doesn't, just says whatever is painted like that, mask off that whole thing. If you have an open circle, closed circle, okay? You, it'll look right now, it looks like it's 100% mass, but it's maybe not because my pressure was different in certain places. Like I didn't keep the same pressure everywhere. So that's more more noticeable when you switch to like a sculpting brush. And then you're like, you're sculpting like this, like this here, let's go really big, really big. And let's turn off thick skin too. So we can do this. Okay, and then now let's go backwards. We'll go from there. And then boom. So you can see the gradients in the masking. So you can see it better that way, maybe. See, there's a gradient yeah. in that mask works, there. Works based on the pressure. Yeah. And then you can also do this. You guys can adjust 
all the strokes if you want to as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. And just... now, and now, in the new ZBrush, you can also use your morph brush. So I can go, you know what? I don't want all this anymore. I want from there. And now I can morph out. Let's not have paint. And I can now morph out. What? So in essence, you guys have almost unlimited morph targets with your undo history now. Okay. I can erase <laughs> all this. Awesome. I can erase all this if I want to. So is this all in the latest ZBrush version? In the latest, latest. You need to have 2023.2 to do this. Mm -hmm. 23.2. Did you guys change anything anything on Z Modeler on twenty three point two, like any no. any? No. It's all the same as twenty two. No, the the biggest things for twenty twenty three point two is this, and the biggest one that everyone's excited about that everyone is raving about is the anchor brush. That one's made a very big splash for everybody. Oh, interesting. So this is you can make a point, make a point, and then now you can deform. Okay however you want and you can see there's different there's different ones here you see there's a move rotate mm -hmm. so it's like you can do a move instead so i grab this and you can move it and then you can just keep moving points oh moving wow. points moving so this points. is very good for posing characters or yeah yeah, yeah people are using it for that like for you sure. could use it for dynamic sculpt sculptures like if you're sculpting in pose for example you know yep there's yep there's move and rotate so and can, can you rotate. mask and do that? Like, let's say you model mask and say, don't move this part, just move that. Yeah, you mean if you mask off the mesh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to... Oh, interesting. What did you did, um, make with this one specifically? Do you have any example to show that you made something that's... Um, I did not because we just released it like three weeks ago. Ian, who's in here right now, he made... So we made a squid. So how, for example... I could do now, let's say you want to do, say, something like this. Let's do brush, curve, tube. And let's say I do something like this. And let's make sure. Let's see if I don't have solo mode on. Don't have symmetry. Interesting. Is it broken in this? Make sure it's snapped. Okay, let's see. What have I done? There is a feature in ZBrush. I love it when I use IMA brush, the curve function. Yeah. Which one? Um, when you do curve function under strokes, and then you do uh, basically frame mesh with polygroups. You can do a lot with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't making it too, but I have to go check. I don't know what I did. Okay, so something like this, right? Yeah. Now? You could switch to the anchor brush as well and go, okay, and make a point there. I'm going to make a point there, switch to inflate, and then inflate. Oh, this. you want to make it a small, oh, what the hell? That's, that's awesome. Right. And then you can move it if you want to as well, where you want. So these can all be moved as well. Oh, interesting. And then you can keep its two points. Let's see, you can do stuff like that. So you can mask this out again and then just make two points here and then keep playing with this. You can then start walking down and do, let's do some rotation. And then just keep walking down, keep walking down. Just stuff like that. And then it's moving this part. I don't want it to move that part. And I don't want it to move that part. So stuff like this. Right? So, and then just move that out if I want to. So stuff like that, you can start doing mm. with it. And you can take this, make a point there, make a point there. Switch back to your inflate, scale, and then you have scale as well. So you can scale it up and down. Right, it's all about where the first and second point are. Yeah. Right, so. so stuff like that. You got to think about like, like even if you went back to that curve brush, right? And you do like some kind of like horn thing like this. 
right? You got something like that. So now you can just go switch to the anchor and say, okay, I'm just make a point at the very beginning and a point at the end and then switch to that inflate again and inflate it down if you wanted to. So now it's inflating. Wow, that's it. crazy. And then now you go, okay, well now I want to start doing some rotations. Make your two points and now start rotating. But then you can say, let's only worry about those portions, right? And then now you just playing if with If you had portions. something like this uh, surface, you know, there is the move topology. If you had something similar to that for this, so without masking, you would be able to rotate and say, hey, move topology based on the... Yeah, you this is that? actually just kind of in like beginning stages. We already uh -huh. have a lot of stuff planned, but we want to give you guys what we had already. Yeah. So there's already there's still more things that we're looking at with the anchor brush. There, there there's many possibilities. Yeah, us. yeah. This is just the tip of the iceberg, honestly. Yeah, so. the first version, basically. Yep. That's that's yep. awesome. Thanks, Ian. Bye. Yeah, he left. So. Already. That that was a big one. The morph tire was a big one, and then the other one for hard surface for, especially someone like us that like hard surface in ZBrush, you can now, if I do here, this will be the easiest way to see it. Do something like this, and then now, I'm gonna switch to this and say I want this, to go to there, and now contact has changed. And then boom, it moves it right to what? that contact, contact point now. Wow. Then you don't have, you know, this is actually perfect. You, you can align stuff if you have a lot of, mm -hmm. like, for example, it's samurai armor. There's a lot of uh, different pieces that you want to match to something else. This is yep. going to make that easy. Yeah. And you can do up to three points. So I can say, I want that one. And then I want that to go there. That's two. So you can get a perfect match. If you wanted to, yeah. And you can go up, up to three points. So it's going to average it, I guess. Yeah. So. No, it's going to look at each one of those vertex points uh -huh. that I'm clicking on. Look at those vertex points and make them have to go to that area. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, but you don't have to do You can just literally do one. I can say, no, put it here. Center to center. Put, the cent put that to the top, C1, and apply, and then boom. Mm. Yeah, this is this is great. So this is new for 20, you got to have 2023.2 to have this. Mm -hmm. And then we added in by a feature request. The other, the big item was we added two sliders for spotlight now. So there's actually a mid value now for spotlight. So, which is huge of how to be pushing in and out your alphas. Um, how much of it do you want to be pushing in and compared mm. to pushing out? And then there's a blur now to it. That's amazing. So those are the four biggest features added for point two, the 2023.2. Honestly, ZBrush has so many things already. It's hard to catch up. Yeah, well. I'm already outdated. <laughs> we have to. And well, now you got to pay for the new features now. Too. <laughs> that's that's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The day has come. No more free upgrades. I mean, yeah. People don't like that. I don't want to get to the politics side. <laughs> I want to cause trouble for you, but <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, it is, is what it is, is, I guess. You know, we got to pay salaries for people and yeah. everything too. So yeah. the reality is always different, you know. Yeah. But uh, honestly, Zebra's changed so many lives. Yeah, changed well, it changed my life. I wouldn't be sitting yeah. here without it. That's for sure. Yeah, me too. I guess Definitely, me too. A lot of things. Like I, I was telling, actually talking to my friend about it in 2000, uh, when was it? 2003 or four, when I started using ZBrush two, that was very early. Nobody was really using it. If you remember. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it was kind of like the new trend. Everybody was like, oh, what is this? It's, there's a software that is sculpting. You can do weird stuff. Polygon yep. is not a limitation anymore. Yeah. And when I jumped in at that time, I was, I don't know, like almost uh, 18 years ago or something like that I was yeah. like 20 19 18 19 yeah it's, it's been uh i want to say what was mine 2004 i also started using yeah it. i started at the same time yeah but you know how crazy it is in 2007 because of ago. what's that almost 20 years ago yeah almost 20 years ago 
And in 2007, I got a job because of ZBrush because I oh. learned to use ZBrush. And it was a trend when I showed it to a, a client. They were like, what the hell? How did, how did you make this? Which, what software is this? Can you do this? Can you? I'm like, yeah, I can. They yeah. gave me a job. Yeah. And then well, I'm Mr. here now. Epstein, you're in here, right? Yeah, Kurt is here. Yeah, he says the same. Yeah, it's, it's been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you guys got to charge the studios more, honestly. I'm not sure how much is the license for the studios. Uh, well, all that's also changed. So the studios do get charged more now, I think. For, <laughs> uh, depends on the license. There's multiple licenses now for studios. Yeah. Okay. There's, an, there's teams. There's... There and then there's a float, and then there's like there's different levels for a studio. Do you, do you have anything for people that don't have money, like in third world countries or somewhere that they need to use ZBrush, but they are just learning? You know, they don't have money to do it. See what I'm talking about? Like that's a big, big problem. That's why a lot of people are moving to Blender right now because it's free. They don't have to use cracks or you know things like that or mm -hmm. places like Iran or or Iraq, you know, places that don't have access to, you know, free internet to buy stuff or they can't even afford it. You know, prices are crazy for, for those areas. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting because as an example, yeah, again, not to get into the politics, but I saw that Blender announced they're not going to be doing anything more with their sculpting. They're not going to be doing anything on a sculpting? Nope. They well, they can't compete with years. ZBrush, man. Like They haven't done anything in two years because, uh, because the main guy left that was doing all this. Oh, wow. He left two years ago almost now. Yeah. The guy, the guy that was going to take it over is no longer there. So they, I believe they just announced they're done. They're not going to do anything with their sculpting tools. Yeah. That's you can, your you problem can... with Blender. That's your problem with Blender. You don't have, Yeah, it's not a business in the sense that it's not a company. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a business, but it's not a company that, you know, so it could shift gears or the person that maybe does a really powerful tool. Mm-hmm decide you know what i'm not going to update it anymore and have it work i'm done i moved on to something else yeah yeah i don't know i don't want to get into it <laughs> no i just bring it up i'm gonna make trouble for you now <laughs> cool i guess i don't know we can finish it maybe sure Anyone unless has... somebody unless people have if you guys have questions questions about something yeah it's been two hours I don't know if you're down for it. They can do more sessions later, make something from scratch. Yeah. And they, and yeah. Have, yeah. I figured out something that uh, I'd want to do from scratch for sure. And then this was I the project. I have projects going on in my head that I want to do. Like, would it be cool to make like a, I don't know, like a make head or something based on a concept or just yeah something interesting, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. That'd be fun. Let's plan that, for that it, way. Like, yeah, everyone would get a lot from seeing how certain people approach certain yeah. things as well. It's yeah. a great way to learn. Because people don't know it. I mean, uh, in my class, I was teaching how to make armors and patterns. Uh, the, the armor that I showed you, the Persian warrior. Yeah. There's a diamond shaped pattern on the shoulder. And I did that all in ZBrush. And somebody was like, I can do it faster in Blender. One of my students, I think he's here already. Okay. And, and we tried. The speed was the same. I I asked him how did you do it. I did exactly the same thing in ZBrush with Z Modeler. Yeah. So I mean, there's like po infinite possibilities. The only thing actually I want to ask you. Yeah. You know, split brush in ZBrush that doesn't split. Uh, sorry, split in Z Modeler. You know, when you use vertices to split, it doesn't do it. Uh, on a, like you can't mirror it. Have X on and do it on both sides. Do you guys plan to fix that? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I have to look in and see, I have some things that I have planned for Z Modeler that I would hopefully like to take a look at. Um, so you're referring to, let's see now I'm, do, I'm do getting wanna... lost. I'm getting lost in sculpting. <laughs> now. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting down the, going down the rabbit hole. Here. <laughs> the artist, uh, Zen so, zone, Z basically. Mother, you're, are you talking about the polygons? No, no, not on the polygon. If you go on the vertex. You're talking about the vertex. Yeah, so there's like a, a yes. uh, not a split um, slide. Because this uh, is going to make a circular. No, no, not. Yeah, I use that a lot. I use that a lot. That's yeah. an amazing brush. Um, there is another one. Let me check the name. Hold on a second. Um, just gonna there's slicing it. now. Yeah, like the slicing, slicing actually. So you can go from point to point and we just slice through it for you. Yeah, but it doesn't do it. It doesn't mirror it to the other side. 
So you have to mirror and weld if you want to. Like if if you turn on your no, X. You, yeah, you're saying you want symmetrically. Yeah. Yeah, you see that it doesn't happen on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, we have this something we have to look back and take a look and see what we can do. Yeah, because this because is a this is a very good brush. This. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is this is amazing. I I use this a lot. And, and the other thing is, um, there now yeah. do that look. Oh, how did you do that? What the hell? There, I'm making a polygroup based upon my splitting. Oh, can you show it? So yeah, so if you're splitting, right? If I go and then here, we can do, we can also do slice know, by know, edge. Right. Yeah, slice, edge all of them. So now I can go boom, boom. Just keep walking it. Oh, uh, do you have to have the crease on, or without the crease? Yeah, can do that? no, it needs the crease because it's using the crease. I see. Okay, okay. That's what it's using to go through here. So when you go and click on this, right? So when you start going through this. Okay, so here we'll go like this. You started in the middle, it didn't work. Yeah. Well, we'll make it a little more visual. Okay, so you see those creased edges? Yeah. This polygroup fill, it's looking at crease. Oh, I see. So it's stop at crease edges, stop at different polygroups. Uh huh. So now if I click here, see it stops at the crease edges. Yeah. And if I do something like this, and then see if I click the brown, see. Ew. Stops at this the polygroup. And this isn't changing. Because it's also using the polygrouping border too. That's pretty awesome. So you can do stuff like this now, and then now that green one I can change, and the other three are left alone. Yeah, that's amazing. I can use this a lot. And then this is very useful this. for making armor stuff. Yep, and see like this, so I can change all these polygroups on the fly without yeah. changing any other polygroup. That's amazing. There's a question. Somebody's asking a question. Maybe you can answer that as well. Uh, would it be possible to have a pose brush that works like cloth, move elastic, and move geometry in a dynamic sim sort of way, basically like uh, Gumby with dynamic simulation? Thoughts? Uh, I think what you're looking for is kind of where the anchor brush can do. I think. Would it be possible to brush to pose like a cloth move? So you want it to be kind of like stretchy, like Gumby kind of like anime because the anchor brush might be giving what you want now because that anchor brush um, can be used. So if I want to like go from here to his wrist, right? If I'm on rotate, he's rotating like this. So now here we want this. I still use masking and transpose for that, honestly. So you can do this. This is your rotate. But then you can also do rotate and move at the same time. Oh. So now. Can you rotate I'm... without deforming it? Like a sharp. That's, that's why. That's what rotate is. If you just wish to rotate, oh, then it's, I see. Only, it's only rotating. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of like deforming as well, like a stretching a, li a little bit, as if like it's re rotating around the curve. Yeah, that's because it's not it's not like a uh, rig. That yeah, has yeah. Waiting, there's no waiting like a rig would. So what you can do is Z spheres though. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if this is what they were looking for. This, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. If this like, because then you can see you can do, because they were looking more for like a Gumby, <laughs> elastic. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's what who was uh, asking it. Nuclear divide. I don't know if that's what you were looking for. God mode. <laughs> so then you can... you can make some weird stuff. <laughs> We're getting to the to a different it's, category it's, uh, now. It's, it's the thing. It's the thing. <laughs> it's it's the thing is what it is. But then, so you can keep moving these points and doing what you want with them. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of those weird animations we see on YouTube sometimes. You know, the, oh, yeah. the character... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I, I no, I don't know. No, there no. was a there was like there's like some people make these weird um, animations with uh, with naked scans that they, they just walk around and deform it in a weird way. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw it. I'll find something and share it. It's funny. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but I would take that very Gumby one. <laughs> looks like a couch handle, like a, the rest. Oh yeah. Yeah. Arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Organic. <laughs> yeah, organic armrest. That's very dark. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. 
Wow, wow, fuck off with the little act out. Adds crease weight to the edge, but it only works sometimes. Can you explain? Um, select lasso does not add creasing. So wait, you're saying you're getting creasing is what you're saying? So when you have lasso selected, okay, if you're holding on control, control and shift, it gives you that, ed it deselects yeah, yeah. the edge loop. And you're saying you're holding control, shift, and alt? That's that's not going to do anything. It doesn't do anything. Can you explain? Because this, this doesn't add creasing. This is just a selection tool, So it does, but it doesn't add creasing. But this selection is really good. I use it all the time. Yeah, this. This is why we added like the edge thing, so you knew when you're on the edge yeah. or on the poly. You guys have a lot of hidden features people people don't know about. I just, you know, work and suddenly discover something. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> you know, like, for example, I don't know if, if you talked about this. When you hold shift, you smooth. But then if you like hold your, shift. yeah, hold hold shift, start smoothing, and then leave shift, and then it's going to relax. Yeah. yeah, it's my fave. That's my number one smoothing. That's why yeah. we ripped it out. That's why we ripped it out, and that's why it's its own smoothing brush now. Um, oh, right you ripped it out. Okay. Yep. I wish smooth alt. Could. Is Can we still like hold shift and live live shift or yeah. it's not like yeah, yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you have a controller for it too in the brush palette. In the smooth brush modifiers, this is your strength for that right there. That polish. That's strength. an amazing yeah, that's the best brush. Individual brush. strength. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I use that. But all also the, time. the two nuclear divide, maybe just use the cloth brushes to do what you want to do, maybe. Because you have move. You do have cloth move that you could and a nudge that you could use, and maybe that's what you're looking for. So, like you have these, or it's going to use cloth, like to allow things to be moved around, a more of a cloth sense. <laughs> that's even more creepy. <laughs> we are making. I don't know what we're making. <laughs> uh, melting. I'm melting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Pure art. That's modern modern art right there. Oh, uh, like, hey, let's sell it. Maybe it's worth it 40 grand. Printed. Print it. Modern Printed, art is right. Man. Just don't even print it. in the gallery that. now. <laughs> Get in the oh. gallery. Bronze. Mold it. You know? Yep. Fun one. The yeah, hands that's, look that's... creepy now. <laughs> Damn. That's hard to what are you at. trying to pose, Nuclear? Well, but what is it you're trying to pose? You're trying to pose some cloth stuff, or are you trying to pose, uh, like, hard surface? You're trying to pose a human character type, so I can wrap my head around it just a little bit more. And then, uh, Radeep, I don't know. Control Shift Alt does not do a crease. Going back to that. Can you uh, expand upon that one? Someone says, when do you use? I well, Most of the time I use the lack going. So like, like yeah. it's, it's a must. I barely use. Smooth is not that. Smooth. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's like this here. Here's an easy way I always like to show it. It's like on this guy. We so if I'm doing down. this, is the regular smooth. And see, yeah. look, it's already putting an indention in his head. Yeah. Because think of it, it's more like a Superman smooth. It's pushing and smoothing at the same time. Yeah. Where the alt smooth, I let go and see, look, even though I'm in the same spot, there's no indention happening. Yeah. Because it's more of a relax. It's more like it can't push. So it's doing more of this. It's like sliding and then relaxing the topology. You keep the volume, basically. This is actually yeah. very good for, um, like, for example, when you're um, noodling and using the clay buildup. Yeah. You know, and then you want to get rid of those, um, you know, sharp lines and stuff. Yeah, especially if you have some of that irregular topology. That was made when we, that, that alternate smooth brush is old. Yeah. That thing's like 12, 13 years old. Yeah. We did it when we made. Um... Like if you have pinches on the model, that's not yeah. good, you know, that's going to yeah. fix that. Yeah, that's why we made it. We made it specifically for that. But nobody knows about it. That's the interesting part. Whenever I show it to my students, they're like, what? <laughs> this is yeah. still hidden. Most people don't know. Everybody's getting tortured basically to a smooth. Okay, so you're hey, if I have a few polys and then are only selected, it will add crease. Uh 
how I don't understand what he's talking about. I have fewer polygons. Are you are you saying like how low do I need to, how low do I got to go? So here here's like this is few. So you're saying you're holding down Control, Shift, and Alt at the same time, and you okay there like this. What is that? It's creasing one edge at a time. Oh yeah, when you just uh, Control yeah. Shift all then click yeah. I thought he's talking about like an edge loop crease. No, one edge. He's talking about. Oh this. man, I I hate crease. I don't like it at all. I love creasing. <laughs> You're the opposite. We can't be friends, Paul. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just add edge loops whenever I want to have sharp edges. Super but You're saying it's inconsistent is what you're saying, is what they're saying. Yeah, probably. So it might be, is it a, you're talking about, it could be a topology thing. Sorry, I said noodling, but do the link. That's what I mean. <laughs> Someone said what is the... <laughs> so you're saying this is when does it get inconsistent for you? For me? No, I'm talking oh, to Pride. Oh, who who was yeah, it? Yeah, Pride. Because it's working every time for me. You're talking about that. All right. Um, I would need to see. You probably would be best to maybe make a ticket so we can talk back and forth, so we can figure out the inconsistency that you might be having, so we can go from there. Then we can go from that. Uh, and then Chase, we got your question. Anything from anybody else? I think that's it. Did we get everybody? <laughs> I'm just laughing at. I said, <laughs> "What is noodling?" <laughs> they get that. <laughs> just wishing for a refined cloth brush designed for posing. You know, it's very possible. You never know. Maybe the the anchor brush will give you something that you want. The especially future anchor brush, maybe you never know. Let's wrap it up. Did we do it on purpose? The Control Alt sh uh, Shift. Mm, I, I know. I I need to look and see. No, that's not something. I can't remember when we added that. When that was added. So there's a the stuff remember. that you don't even know about ZBrush. That's there, I don't <laughs> trying to remember. Well, now it's like a big, especially now we've done so many release. Like we're mm -hmm. almost releasing something every month now. It's it's crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Um, Do you know everything about ZBrush? Like all the things that exist in ZBrush, you you can use them and you remember everything. Mm, yeah, there might be a couple. There's some things I probably need to give myself a quick refresher on because oh. I haven't used the feature in a very long time. But for the most part, yeah, I pretty much, I used to write all the help notes, like all this stuff used to be me. Um, So I've handed it off to somebody else now, though. So gladly That's... handed it off to somebody else. Um, So yeah, yeah, for the most part, there's pretty much almost every feature. I'll, there's a couple things I might like, oh, let me go refresh my memory real quick on this again. Mm. But yeah, pretty much any feature in here, I'd be able to tell you how it works and what you can do with it. I want to ask you a question. I don't know if you can answer or not up to you. Okay. Do you think the company is better before Maxon or, or after, or it's not changed at all? Uh, that's a tough question. I, I don't think it's really changed a ton. It's still the whole same team working on the same ZBrush. But is it like and the some cases are... you got to look at, you got to look at the benefits, look at it. Redshift now being part of ZBrush. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about like on the development side. Do you guys feel like you have the same freedom that you had before, oh, yeah. or yeah, yeah. there's no restrictions anymore? No, there's like no it's, it's the same as no. as before. No, it's the same. That's good. If we were to request, could you do more streams regarding Madcap editing? Sure. You're asking me to join more streams with you guys. Is what you're asking for? Sure. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can figure plan, out something. 
Yeah, we can plan another another one. Maybe we can. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe we could make a small make piece or you know use Z modeler or different features to make something uh -huh. UV it. You know, just take yeah. it as far as possible. I can do some stuff as well. If Paul, if is peel UV. I can't. I can't say anything about peel UV. Oh. Okay. Should we wrap it up or you want to continue? Yep. It's up to you. How do I move objects after I have brought it in front of the other software? Wait, scale master. How do I move an object after I... Well, I don't know why there's a little heart in my chat and it covers some of the text. Why is it doing that? Let's see. Is it something in the browser? Oh, it's their emoticon stuff. There you go. Yeah, uh, how do I move an object after I have brought it in from other software? What do you mean? Well, Scale Master is about physically changing the size of a model inside a ZBrush for the purpose of exporting then to three to three D print or get it out to some other application to get the exact sizing. Um, although, also you can export and have size change without actually changing the physical size inside a ZBrush. What can you elaborate more on? How do I move an object after I have brought it in from another piece of software? You would move it just like any item. Like, if you are you meaning like move by Gizmo? Like, what do you mean specifically? Because Scale Master isn't any, got anything to do with moving. It's just it's just scaling and set your size, which I live off of, especially for all the toy work I do and the three D printing that I do. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Pradeep, thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, been been fun. I can talk all night. But Paul is hard to get, by the way. Like, dude, <laughs> I messaged you for a year until we, yeah. we did it. I disappeared, too. I know. My, schedule, is my schedule's insane. And the door keeps opening. That's my daughter. So she's probably wanting dinner. She's like, what's going on? Are, we, are you done? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I have a one-year-old already. Yeah. Last time my wife was pregnant, we chatted. Yeah. And then we didn't well, do it in my life. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. How old is your daughter now? Seven. Six, seven. seven. Wow. That time go, goes fast, man. Damn, we're getting old. So you would just switch to the gizmo and you'd be able to move it. There would be no reason why you wouldn't be able to move your object. But are you referring to like the topology you did? Is it sitting in the wrong position in space? Is that what the problem is? So it sounds like your workflow is you did something in ZBrush, then you went out to another program, retopologized it, and then you're bringing in your retopology. It should be fine. After I started to learn the scale. I'm not sure you what could he means. move the eyes after I, you started to learn the scale. I Is would it... need to see a video to maybe completely understand what might be happening to you. There's no reason why. Just make sure it's not masked. That'd yeah, the that's the only thing I can think of. It should move. But the, the gizmo, it doesn't matter where the object's from. It, it's inside a ZBrush. It can be moved with the gizmo. It doesn't matter where the mesh came from. That's not relevant. Once it's in ZBrush and once it's in 3D mode, you can move it or rotate or scale it. Masking would be the only thing. Um, the only other thing would be maybe, maybe if something's like ginormous, like gigantic, gigantic, you might run in. I know what the transpose you did, but I don't think the gizmo has the same problem. Let's see, where are we at here? Let's see what size we're at. Okay, this thing's gigantic. It still moves. So I know the transpose line would have problems when something was really large. Someone see, like, says, see, "Oh, the Z intensity." Are you like, see now this isn't working? Is that is that this? See, this doesn't work. The transpose line, but if I switch the gizmo, it works. Why is it that transpose doesn't work? Because it's so gigantic oh, and uh, it's just ginormous. The way that tool is built off scale is oh. going to take an effect on it. Well, it could be user error, what he's saying. Well, he's saying it's also it was in the wrong place. That's why he was trying to 
move it. Yeah. It so shouldn't be in the wrong place. Though, so if you were to follow, if you took the original mesh from ZBrush, brought any other application, redefollowed around it, it should come popped in in the exact same location, unless you're telling your program to do stuff. Because you can tell programs to do certain things. Uh, like for example, the plugin itself, the one that is made for 3D printing too, the 3D Print Hub for exporting, by default, um, the size options, uh, is it in the size options? It's in the export options. See, there is setting in here. Then in essence, it tells um, the move everything back to the center, right? M move bounty access to origin. Right, so in essence, they all move to the center. They can move to the center. Like there's stuff like that, and that's programs could have that. So maybe, maybe there's something that's clear in the transformations when you're exporting than the other program, and then that's why it's coming in the wrong location. Because uh, ZBrush is just going to look at whatever coordinates it's been given, and then that's it. It doesn't change it. He's actually saying the eyes were massive compared to my new piece. New piece. So that could be the issue. Yeah, then it could have been you were. ZBrush's default world scale is millimeters, so maybe you went into a program where it was centimeters. And, and then export it centimeters. centimeters. And then when you brought it in, those numbers, like when you export an OBJ, it doesn't know that it's in millimeters or centimeters. It just has numbers. It just knows 5, 6, 12. But it doesn't know what 5, 6, 12 is in centimeters, inches, millimeters, whatever it is. So maybe in your other program, you were in a different scale world. And then that's why it came in massive, because then those numbers were different. And then when it comes in the ZBrush, on the model you were already working on in ZBrush, and it was in a different world scale. But then when you're importing it, seeing, oh, you want me to go 6, 3, 14. Oh, but actually, I'm now in ZBrush, and that's millimeters, so, right? or vice versa. Seems Maybe like that's what it. you ran into. Seems like it's fixed. I said thank you. Uh, nope. That's what I would guess. Seems like your guess was correct. Maybe. Maybe. Do you want right, to? I gotta head out. Unfortunately, yeah, let's I go. One. Uh, I'm gonna finish it here, guys. Thank you for joining. I'm gonna talk to Paul. Maybe set up another one for something else. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining.